Welcome to the beauty and warmth of the Sunshine State. While many up north finish the final weeks of winter, here the temperature hovers near 80, and work is undergoing to get ready for the upcoming season. With better than a week's worth of games underway, we're set for today's battle, the Mets and the St. Louis Cardinals, coming up right here on MSG. Well, this is a spring training day, just a classic mid-March Saturday afternoon in Florida inside Tradition Field in Port St. Lucie. MSG brings you Mets spring baseball presented by Acela Express as today the Mets entertain the St. Louis Cardinals. The Mets leading winner from a season ago, Steve Traxel will take the mound today as the starting pitcher. His first spring appearances have been strong. Following him, a young man bidding for the number five job in Grand Roberts. And welcome inside Tradition Field with Fran Healy, Ted Robinson, and the early spring report card for the Mets thus far. Fran, the pitching has been strong. And Steve Traxel, you know, people say, can Steve Traxel match the career best year he had a year ago? And I say, why not with a much better defensive team behind him? And they are much better defensively, especially up the middle. But Steve Traxel, by the way, is reportedly throwing the ball better now this year than he did last year and last year he had 16 wins and Traxel gave the Mets well he really rewarded the fate the Mets had in him with better than 200 innings with the two one hitters and that career best 16 win season and his place is cemented amongst the front four in the Mets starting rotation all of whom have pitched well this spring Tom Glavin had his second outing yesterday over in Lakeland the cumulative ERA 0.54 and that leaves the question Who's going to be number five? If you were going to handicap it early on, one of the front runners is Grant Roberts back doing what he's always wanted to do, Fran, and that's be a starter. And Ted, when Grant Roberts was in the minor leagues with the New York Mets, he was their number one pitching prospect, and he had overpowering stuff. He's had some arm problems during his career, but he's back, he's healthy, and I think it's a great move, giving him an opportunity to get out of the bullpen. He didn't want to be in the bullpen. He wanted a shot at the fifth, the fifth starter spot, and he's getting it right now. He's the front runner. Could be a big plus for the Mets if he stays healthy. Well, you can even look beyond those numbers and just spend any time around the Mets, and they'll all say Grant Roberts is looking good. He's really opened up some eyes here in his bid to outlast the competition and be the fifth starter. So Traxel and Roberts will be the front two pitchers for the Mets today. They'll face Albert Pujols and the Cardinals. Mets will have their front liners in there as well. Mike Piazza starts behind the plate. Kaz Matsui will play as the DH again. And we'll check in with Mets left fielder Cliff Floyd when they come in. Cliff Floyd is a man that last Saturday, our first spring telecast, demonstrated his massive power with this rope home run to right field. He's lighter. He finally had a painful bone spur on his heel, dealt with surgically. And a friend that those numbers that he put up last year were on one leg in about two thirds of a season. Imagine what he might be able to do and what he should be able to do if healthy this year. That's the very point that Cliff addressed when he first got here to Florida. I was affected by a great deal because, you know, with me being such a big guy, I need my legs, I need my, you know, bottom half. And when you don't have that, you tend to compensate you know, with other parts of your body that tend to get annoyed also. So um, that was that was the most annoying thing was not being able to uh, get to a certain pitch I knew I could hit, but I just couldn't get to it. You know, I knew I could crush it. I mean, I, I hit some balls at Shea. Even though the elements are what they are and the dimensions are what they are, if you hit a ball good, it's going out. And I hit some balls, I just didn't have everything behind it. And that's a, that was a frustrating thing, but, you know, I dealt with it. I learned a lot from it. You know, I, I, I thought I got better at some things. And, uh, you know, I learned a lot about myself. Regardless of what anybody thought, I, I really went out there and uh, gave it all I had. And some days it was better than others. But, um, you know, with the team in the situation it was in, I felt, you know, my pride would not allow me to, to, to sit down. And I just tried to go out there and do the best I could. Now that is one of the enduring memories of last year, Cliff Floyd playing on into August despite that leg that needed surgery. In fact, Cliff Floyd hit 395, his final 43 at bats for the Mets last season. He's out there today and first, I don't want to jinx anything, Fran, but I've been here over a week and I've not seen a drop of rain yet. Have you seen rain since you've no, been here? No, no, this is terrific weather. I mean, it's been spectacular this month. You see the temperature right there is 73 degrees. 
So in terms of, and, and obviously the issue with rain, it means everybody's getting working on yeah. schedule. No one's pushed behind. They're playing, as you mentioned the other night in our telecast, uh, they, they are now playing a lot of B games here in Florida. Of course, the players are in such great shape. You don't have to worry about them. They're, they're just trying to refine themselves for the upcoming season. Most of them are ready to go right now. Mets are playing a split squad today, by the way. Half their squad is down in Fort Lauderdale taking on Baltimore. Now the Cardinals starting lineup today. They've got only a handful of their regulars out there. But of course, the big name, Albert Pujols, who this year has moved to first base. Scott Rowland is here as well to bat fifth. Mike Matheny, their regular catcher here. And Bo Hart, who was in the competition to win their second base position. And of course, you also notice that DH, the Cardinals agreed today, as uh, teams have done all week. At the Mets' request, the Cardinals have agreed to employ the DH today so that Kaz Matsui can play for the Mets. You know, it's interesting. It's so, so important for the Mets this spring because if Matsui couldn't go up there and see game pitching, that means he'd be starting up. They don't know when. I talked to Aaron Howe before the ball game, and he asked Kaz Matsui about that finger, and he still needs some more time. As you look at Matsui right there, but he has been he has been swinging the bat from the left side of the plate, and. They're hoping he'll start swinging from the right side, but the key is to, to see that live game pitching. So important. So defensively, behind Steve Traxel in this afternoon's ball game, Brazell, Reyes, McGillian, and Zeal in the infield. Floyd, Cameron, Sedano left to right in the outfield. The odds behind the plate, and we will focus our attention defensively on Todd Zeal over at third base. He's going to be an important part of this ball club because he can play many different positions. Get behind the plate. Broke in with the Cardinals. I, it was like yesterday when Ted Simmons was the farm director with the Cardinals. He said, we have a catcher in the minor leagues. He can't miss superstar in the big leagues. Todd Zeal. Shortly thereafter, he came to the big leagues and he moved into third as you look at Tony La Russa. 25th year. Big league managing for Tony La Russa. An amazing run. I'll tell you how things change. You know, Tony is a very conservative, very intense manager. You play by his rules, and he has many rules for his ball club. When he was a player, I played against him in the minor leagues. He was a style master. Had the gloves <laughs> hanging out of his pockets, <laughs> long hair. He does not want you to bring that up. <laughs> it's one of them. I mean, it, it, it's one of the just things I think that is so extraordinary about Tony La Russa is that he's done it this long. And maintained his edge. Oh, you know, I asked him about that. Still winning. And it's interesting as we see Taguchi stand in for the Cardinals. Just to finish the thought on La Russa. This is the last year of his contract in St. Louis, and it's become a little uh, piece of uh, news there that he has not been extended beyond this year. And the Cardinals start the season. Uh, they were a little hamstrung. They didn't have quite the money to spend that the Cubs in Houston had this past winter. He's a Hall of Fame manager, but yet he believes that the Hall of Fame should only be for players. Except for guys like he, see, he mentioned, uh, Tommy Lasorda, Sparky Anderson, goodwill ambassadors for the game of baseball. Steve Traxel facing right-handed batting So Taguchi. That little flare out in the shallow left center is going to fall for a hit. So Gucci got that right off the end of the bat. Mets know a little bit more about him. They would uh, likely not play him where they did. Taguchi, not very much power at all. So leading off the game, Taguchi hits the ball right off the end of the bat. And falls in. You know what? As a hitter, that relaxes you that first hit. See how Taguchi does the rest of the ball game. This is veteran outfielder Mark Quinn. He's playing right field. Right field will be manned by Reggie Sanders this year for the Cardinals. Reggie is uh, Reggie's trying to play for every team before he's done. <laughs> As Taguchi takes off, speed pays off, and he's going to well, Cameron does a good job. Well, one. It seems like at least once every game right now we're seeing Mike Cameron do something to to show you his value in defense. It's not a good throw by Piazza at all, but a great backup by Cameron. Gucci with a pretty good jump off first base. Mike Piazza bouncing the ball by Reyes at second base. And Cameron coming in, and when a ball goes by a hitter, runners going to second base, center fielder has only one thing to do, 
run in. No way should a ball go into center field, a runner be able to slide, get up, and go to third. Center field should yeah. be on top of it like right. Cameron was there. Right, but yet we see it. Oh, all the we time. That's what I was saying. Cameron in the spring training game, Cameron did his job there as Quinn dribbles one. Look at the spin on that. Ball. Man. You could try for a month to hit a ball like that and never do it. Couldn't do it. You could try for a year. Couldn't do it. You could try at BP. You couldn't do it. I mean, this thing takes a left-hand oh, turn at about 150 degrees. Well, how about this? Another ball hit off the end of the bat. This is further down the bat. But they get him at first base. The Gucci moves over to third. And a nice ovation for, you'd have to say right now, the best young player in the game. Well, and I say that only because A-Rod is still under 30, but I can't, I just can't think of him as young. I know, it's I'm amazing. So it's amazing. This young man, Albert Pujols, 24 years old and has had three years that are almost unprecedented. And uh, that's a great, great comment by Tony La Russa. Situational hitter. I mean, this was a kid who came here in uh, the spring of 2001 to the Cardinals camp out of a ball. He'd been an A ball. And he did not have any uh, plan to make the team. The Cardinals didn't plan on having him make the team. And he literally played his way on to the team. Look at those days. And in those first three seasons, in fact, the only player who has hit as many home runs as Albert Pujols in his first three big league seasons, Ralph Kiner. 114. Ralph was known as a prolific home run hitter. But you know the, the two names with Pujols right there, it's interesting. One thing you never take into consideration is the ballpark they broke in. For example, DiMaggio and Yankee Stadium, Ted Williams, Fenway Park. That last pitch right there, bouncing off of Mike Biazza's glove. See the runner at third base. So Taguchi thought about it. But he's got Pujols at home plate. You don't want to take the bat out of his That's hands. Right. And Pujols is waving him in, but Taguchi's first instinct was to stay, so he followed it. This one popped up into shallow right. Coming on is Cedeno. And Cedeno catches it. Taguchi off the start. Sedania with a strong throw to the plate. Taguchi returns. Well, Sedania charging in, saying, I got it, makes the catch, and gets the ball in in a hurry. That's the key. Get the ball in no matter how shallow you catch the ball. Just get it into the infielder. In this case, it was to Mike Piazza. Taguchi tagging up, and he knew he couldn't score. Big out right there when you get pools. But Kevin Witt, the batter here with two outs. Witt played about half the year in Detroit last year. And I mention that because I saw his name this morning. I never heard of him before. And I looked up his bio and I said, he played half a year in Detroit? He had like 270 at bats. I never heard of him. And that's what playing in Detroit can do for him right He's, now. I wouldn't be surprised even if the Detroit Free Press decided not to cover him last year. After a while. Detroit had a tough year last year. But they picked up Pudge Rodriguez. Rondell White also signed in. Two balls and a strike to Kevin Witt. Traxel 33 now. This will be his 11th big league season. 16 wins he posted for the Mets. Bested his uh, previous year of 15 wins in 1998 for the Cubs. Here we're talking about Traxel in the open of today's ball game. He is one of the hardest workers I have seen. 
amazing thing about him, Ted, is you know how easygoing he is in the clubhouse, off the field, but on the field, extremely intense. He said one of his problems in the past is he would fight himself on the mound. Well, there's a guy that should help that this year. That's new pitching coach Rick Peterson. The other interesting thing for all the focus on Tom Glavin's quest deck, et cetera, struggles at Shea last year. You know, Traxel's split was interesting. Traxel was six and nine at Shea Stadium last year, 10 and one on the road. Shea's supposed to be the pitcher's part. Yeah, I know it. Side, Whip draws a walk on 3 2. The amazing thing about Traxel, you see the split right there, the home games, the road games. He pitched a masterpiece in his backyard in Anaheim, a one hitter. You know, and it's not just the, the wins and losses in ERA. He gave up 26 home runs last year, Traxel. 19 were at Shea, only seven on the road. Go we'll figure that out. Well, he walked. The guy that I'd never heard of, Kevin Wynn. Now he gets to face the guy everybody's heard of. Scott Rowland. One of the best. Another to, another year with the gold glove for Scott Rowland. They get four gold glove winners on this Cardinal ball club from last year. Al Backlund. Obviously, if you were a, a, a Cardinal pitcher last year, you could not have had a seemingly a better combination a team to pitch for. The Cardinals oh. scored a bunch of runs. And they had the best defense. I don't, I don't statistically. I don't know if it measured out that way. It was errors or a subjective stat. But there's no question the Cardinals have the best defensive team in the league. Yeah, their they're catcher, Gold Glove winner for the I mean, second time, Mike Matheny. Shortstop, third base, center field catcher, just are just spectacular defensive players. And Roland pops this up, but in the sun, Jose Reyes spots it, has it. So Traxel gets out of the first inning jam and he had two hits yesterday for the Mets in their trip to Lakeland. We'll get a chance to see Kaz Matsui DH. So Kaz Matsui will lead off for the Mets in the bottom of the first inning as uh, once again DHing facing veteran right hander Jeff Supon. Uh, nice year in Pittsburgh last year enough of a year to earn him a, a deal here in St. Louis. Cardinals hoping to fill out the back end of their rotation. 29-year-old veteran. Matsui had two hits yesterday. Those were his first hits in, in a Grapefruit League game. That was over in Lakeland. Drove in the Mets' only run yesterday. Did you see where Supan said this, said something that we showed the other night on uh, the telecast when we had the split screen with Matsui and Ichiro? Supan faced Ichiro last year. He faced Matsui few days ago down here he said he reminded him a lot huh. of Ichiro. Out of the way. Matsui. Uh, that's his comment after yesterday's game in Lakeland where he talked about adjusting and I have to find out more about that like two seam moving fastballs now I read that comment and I guess they don't throw the two seamer in, in Japan. I didn't know that. It's, I wish somebody would answer surprise. that phone by the way. There's a shot past Pujols. Kaz Matsui using those legs, and he'll have an easy double here. Whoa, whoa, what a play right there, <laughs> eh? How about that pick by Kevin Witt with the bare hand? You know what? The manager and a coach loves to see that. The left fielder backed up second base. Here's Matsui hitting this ball. And he pulls it, it, puts the head of the bat of that ball right down the right field line. Of course, once a guy with good speed puts it in motion, and you got to hustle that ball back in strong, throw a bad hop. What a play by the left fielder back yeah. up second base. Look at that, so he go. But that's what speed will do. It'll get you all anxious when you pick up that ball. So Reyes, the batter, corner men are in, and Reyes does bunt on the first pitch. I know Jose Reyes has been working on his bunting not only this year but last year. He's stronger this year. He can pull the ball in this situation. Where you, you hate to give up somebody that can hit. And that's exactly what he does when he sacrifices. He gives himself up. 
I know you, you're gambling a little bit, but you love to see him yeah. move the runner along. You like that pitch or off-speed pitch? If it's over to play, Reyes can pull it, pull it hard. First inning sacrifices make my stomach hurt. <laughs> How am I telling you that? I just don't like the first inning sacrifice. Well, how about the, there's a coach in the dugout with Tony La Russa. He's a scout, I believe, for the Cardinals. Jim Leland, who used to have Jay Bell bunt all. There's Jim. Jay Bell led the league in sacrifice bunts, and I mean, he had a bunt in the first inning. Well, I'm sure that, that the reason behind this, and, and there are probably studies that uphold this about the number of times a team that scores first wins a game and Reyes flares one to the left for a hit and that's who's going to come home here and he'll score without a play. In fact Reyes makes a wide turn and nearly turns that into a double. So you got Reyes now at first base with a run batted in. You like to see him get his confidence in driving in runs rather than moving the runner along and here he picks up a base hit into the bat. First inning the story has been the end of the bat. Cardinals did it twice. Reyes does it there, driving in Matsui. If they are productive with that speed, the Mets are going to be exciting. But they got to get on those bases. So here's Cliff Floyd. See, that's the study I would like to see. And I understand that there's a, the team that scores first in a game still wins a higher percentage of games. I'd love to find out the study in that situation where you have a leadoff double. What percentage of innings that man scores with the bunt and what percentage that man scores without the bunt. I'd just be curious to see that. Reyes takes off, Floyd chops one to Roland. And Reyes is going for third. You can see this coming all the way and Reyes makes it easily. That's oh, just hurt. Did he get hurt? Maybe. And something gave out there. He looked, he looked like he landed face first. You don't want to get him hurt. Uh oh. And he had his left hand. <laughs> Something gave out. Here's that play again. Roland gets the ball across the infield. You can, as Ted said, you could see it coming. Reyes didn't hesitate. Came around second base, but he, his face hit the dirt first. Take a look at it again. Good hustle by Jose Reyes. Made it easy, really, to third base. But yeah, he did. He whacked the right chin. Whacked the chin. Woo. Yeah, his arms got caught underneath oh, yeah. his there. body rather than get those getting those arms out straight. Of course, a lot of times you put it out straight, you damage your fingers to third. But you know what? If they play like that, let them go. So Piazza bats. The Cardinals play the middle infielders back. Now, we mentioned this, I believe, Thursday night, Fran. What we have just seen from Matsui and Reyes was what the Mets really had hoped they would have seen the last two years with two different guys yeah. at the top of the order, yeah. Cedeno and Alomar. That never worked. But this Matsui and Reyes combination has a much greater chance of making that kind of game happen. Absolutely. And Art Howe saw Reyes when he was in Japan managing an all-star team, and they, he raved about him. So the jury's still out. Everybody wants to see a, a larger body of work, but the kid at third base we saw, he had a large body of work with the Mets last year before right. he was injured, and he certainly did what he's doing here in spring training. But what these two have, they they have the speed. Oh, absolutely. Cedeno and Alomar didn't have it anymore. That's it was right. hoped that they yeah. had it, but they didn't. Now, again, so, they've, they've got a hit. Obviously, these, these two guys have got a hit. They've got to get on base. That's the proof they have to provide, but if they can, it's much like the Marlins employed yeah. with Juan Pierre and Luis Castillo. And, and, and when you have that type of speed, the, the one team that stood out in my mind when I played was the Oakland A's when they had Bill North and Bert Campanera setting the table. It just changes the complexion of the game. Reyes has to hold on that high bouncer. And Roland made sure, you see? Roland didn't take it for granted that time. And you know, it's funny because Roland looked at Reyes, and, you know, he was more concerned that Reyes might break. And, you know, a third base hook could throw the ball away and, and Messing up his concentration, but Roland watched him, knowing full well this kid might go. You know, it's funny. We talk about speed. We we always equate it with the stolen base, but it just changes the atmosphere for the defense when you have good speed on the bases, and not only in the stolen base situation. I happen to be one. I. I where I come down on all that is I'm, I think the stolen base is not as 
important as it may once have been in the game, perhaps in the 60s and 70s when there were fewer runs scored. But I'm with you in speed, but speed to me, and this is not necessarily measurable, but speed's first to third, second to home, right. tagging on fly balls, right. pressuring on ground balls. I mean, that's speed. And if you, you know, if Matsui and Reyes could pick up 40, 50 stolen bases, I mean, they're, they're, that means they're getting into scoring position. It's just, you know, when you're on defense, I know as a catcher, if you get somebody on first base that, that has that type of speed, Matsui or Reyes, you're over anxious. And one of the things you don't want to be in baseball, whether it's defense, throwing a ball, or hitting a baseball on offense, is you don't want to be over anxious. You tighten up. You got to be relaxed. But that good speed will tighten up the defense where you'll get errant throws, mistakes defensively. And you can hear that very clearly, that decision. Cameron grazed by the pitch. And here's a guy who can run now. He's at first base. Listen to this. Only that CB Buckmore behind the plate. Yes, it is. And our umpiring crew, we've got Todd Zeal batting. And how about this today? We have two of the three most senior umpires in the game working in our spring training game today. Bruce Freming, senior umpire in the game, is working at second base. There's Bruce. And number three in seniority in the game is Eddie Montague, who's working at third base. And he's down here because uh, his son is a player in the Dodgers farm system. So after 27 springs in Arizona, Eddie requested to be assigned to Florida spring training so he could try to watch his son play in some morning games over in the minor league complex. That's great. I mean, I tell you, you talk about experience in the ballpark today, Franny. Look at Framing, Montague here, former Commissioner Faye Vincent is here and just in the Cardinal dugout between Tony La Russa and Jim Leland you got about 43,000 games of managing and Red Shane Deans is here again with the Cardinals. Well Zeal rips this to the left field corner and went and is gone. Todd Zeal with a line drive three run homer and the Mets turn this into a big payoff. Well, good speed. They had the rabbits on the bases, causing havoc. A big pitch from Supan was to Cameron also hitting him. And then Todd Zeal hits Supan. What a lift he could be to this ball. You know, it's funny because he's pretty much a utility player now, but he also was a force in that clubhouse. You could hear Todd Zeal in that clubhouse. Right there, he smokes that ball over the left field fence. Well, right now, and I mentioned this as, as hard as Jay Bell tried last year, Jay just didn't have it left in him to be a productive player off the bench. And Todd Zeal is going to be a productive, more productive bat off the bench. I agree. For the Mets. Well, Todd Zeal had the payoff hit, but it was all started by Cass Matsui's double. And the Mets had a four run first. The first inning, that's what the Mets are hoping to put on the field at Shea Stadium this year. So once again, a reminder, operators are standing by. So Steve Traxel back out for the second inning. John Gall is a prospect. The Cardinals uh, having the competition to win a job this year. Wouldn't guess it by number 81, but this guy is one of their higher regarded prospects. He played at one of the nation's best uh, college programs at Stanford. Interesting swing. What he, but he's been a hitter. That's the funny thing with that swing. Yeah. He's hit 300. He's hit better than 300 at every stop in the minor leagues. Gets his, he get his hands, get the bat out there, and picks himself up a base hit. There's a true gentleman and a lover of baseball. Former commissioner of baseball, a terrific guy. Faye Vincent, John Franco going over to say hello. Faye Vincent, who hurt himself when he was at Williams College. Terrific guy, did a great job as commissioner of baseball. He said the one thing that he felt he failed at was getting the Players Association and owners together. Well, if that's true, if he feels that way. No, he does. He, he's well, I'm saying, okay, then you know what? He's got plenty of company. Yes. There's a long list of people who failed in that 
And you know, the relationship seems to have gotten, since I started, it seems to have gotten better. Unfortunately, you have the work stoppage, but when, it, when they first formed a union, and it's yeah. Player Association had a lot, a lot of work to do. Oh, sure. Now, the histories, this is not the place to revisit all that, but the funny thing is you mentioned that because having a long chat with Tony La Russa this morning, about his all his years in baseball. Well, how about, about this that? for experience in the ballpark? Lafayette, Lafayette High School in Brooklyn. They got two of them right there. Fred Wilpon and Sandy Koufax. And we mentioned John Franco. So there's three of them from Lafayette High School. Two guys right there grew up together. Over there by that new ballpark. Back through the box and Ball Hart gets a base hit. So the Cardinals start with back to back singles here in the second. Take a look at Bo Hart's hit. Bo Hart going the other way, hitting the ball right back up the middle hard. So two base hits, back to back hits here in yeah. the second inning. Okay, book plug time again while I was thinking about Go right this. Ahead. Book plug uh, with uh, springtime coming up, baseball season, Father's Day down the road. You're thinking about two baseball books. Ralph Kiner's new book. Great book. Just came out this week. And it's now in soft cover is the Sandy Koufax book that we talked about last year at this time. Written by Jane Levy and just a spectacular book about Koufax and his career and his impact during that time. Great Boy, book. I mean, he was unhittable. I, mean, I heard some of the greatest hitters who ever played the game just yeah. say that he was unhittable and he, he had a fastball and a curveball and the fastball rose and the curveball went off the table. You can't read the book and not come away with having more admiration for Sandy Koufax. And it, it really societal. It's more as much a societal book as it is a, a book about baseball. A great read. That's funny. I asked Sandy uh, last year talking about how, you know, there were, the word was somebody turned his career around. I think it was Norm Sherry by telling him not to throw the ball as hard. Yeah. I said, is that a true story? He said, well, you know what? The year before it all happened, he said, I got an opportunity to pitch. I had some success. And, then I got more opportunities. So, <laughs> as a gentleman, he said, the story "No, sounds good." Yeah, the story sounds. It was good. all about opportunity. Those two guys right there grew up together mm -hmm. over by Keyspan Park in Brooklyn. Fred Wolfon, Sandy Colfax. Matheny double play ball. That will be Matt Sui. Hopefully, in another couple of days. But in the interim, Joe McEwing's done a nice job in that spot. Turns that with Reyes for six three. Watch out, quick these right here, Reyes, is, he's got quick feet. Now, the ball will go up by the ear. I think that's going to really help him. He is quick, and we're going to take a look at it normal speed. Watch how quick Reyes is getting that ball over to McEwing at second base. <sighs> quick feet, quick turn, and he has that catcher's toss, that short arm throw that you don't see infielders employ. And, and watching Reyes, if you can project an infielder, Say 10 years old is going to have a good arm when he gets older. Teach him to throw it by his ear. It's quicker. Hector Luna is a 24-year-old Dominican. He's a Rule 5 pick by the Cardinals from Cleveland. So he has to uh, stay with the Cardinals in the big leagues or be returned to their organization. Ooh, ripped into left field, and Luna delivers a hit. So the Cardinals get a run on the two out single by Hector Luna. Yes, man. Sui, and they're hoping he'd be ready soon on Jose Reyes. He says, I think there's still a lot of time left in the spring as we get into the games together. I think our combination will be no problem. I'm not worried. Uh, We're yeah. concerned about it. It really shouldn't be. I don't think it's that big a deal making a smooth transition to this country and working with a kid like Jose Reyes at second base. Might even make Matsui a better shortstop. I'll tell you one thing, we have Jose Reyes over there who is one of the best shortstops in the league, now a second baseman. I'll drive Matsui on. You were talking about competition yep. the other night. Mm -hmm. See how quickly I jumped off of one bandwagon <laughs> after the other? He's still dexterous for a guy. That <laughs> you caught a lot of years, man. You can still hop. Well, it's... Uh, Again, it sort of goes back to uh, 
what we talked about in the open with Traxler as a pitch out with Luna running. Well, you're the catcher. As, a, as an observer, it looked to me like Mike was slow getting rid of that ball. Well, the key, you know, is, it's an excellent point. The key when you get out there is to catch it as, as if, you know, you're behind a plate and it's not a pitch out. You know, you catch it, get rid of it quickly. I think Mike is more concerned with getting the ball down there in the air. And he does right here. Now, if you take a look at the velocity of that throw, you know what you say about Mike Piazza? Still has a decent arm. What, he's, what he needs now, and it's amazing because he's such a confident hitter and, and a, really a confident catcher except for his throwing. He's lost his confidence, and that's why yeah. he bounces the ball. Right. But if you look at the velocity and the ball he just threw, you don't worry about his right. velocity. But if you were going to talk about release time, that, slow. that's why just uh, as a, as, as a layperson looking at that, that looked to me like it was slow. It was slow, and he, he's very methodical because he wanted to catch it and make a good throw in the ear to second base. I'll tell you, the other day, Art Howe, we were, we were having a conversation about a number of things, talking about Mike at first base, and he said, you know, the more I watch catchers catch, the more I realize how good a game Mike Piazza calls. Mm -hmm. And it's going to pay off for the Cardinals. That stolen base as Taguchi will deliver a run. So two nothing, or rather two runs for St. Louis, and it's 4-2 Mets lead. Steve Traxel getting roughed up here. We talked about how he's been throwing the ball well down here in Florida. Speaking of getting, let's take a look at his last pitch. Taguchi hitting that ball toward the end of the bat again, picking up another hit. Speaking of being roughed up in yesterday's game, the Cardinals played the Marlins. They roughed up Beckett. Uh, they roughed him up, roughed up Josh Beckett in the yep. first inning. But after that, Tony La Russa told Art Howe that he put on a demonstration of overpowering the Cardinals to the point where Lou Brock was sitting in the dugout with Red Shandies, and they said we couldn't have touched him on our best day. Hey. Hmm. They said Beckett threw lights out after getting roughed up. Now, Fran, you talk about Mike Piazza and the game he calls. Now, this is last year for the Mets. That's he, the ERAs with each Mets catcher behind the plate and the number of innings they call. And he, he did Look a, at that. He did a terrific job. And as I mentioned, Art Howe at a Clear Blue Sky the other day, you know, we were talking about first base and catching, how much Mike will catch, how much he'll be at first. He said, you know, the more I watch catches, the more I realize he calls a terrific game. Now, you you caught. Do you put stock in that statistic? You think no. that's do you, you don't think that's valid? You know what the most important thing is? Catching good pitchers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Back to the middle. Well, the runner going cost the Cardinals a hit there. Reyes was covering second with Taguchi on the run, and as a result, Quinn lost a hit. Well, sometimes, sometimes, the aggressive play backfires. A nice play by Reyes to end the inning. This copyrighted telecast presented by Authority of Sterling Mets may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Sterling Mets. Birthday greetings today, Gretchen Hell, daughter of Mets manager, Art, celebrates number 30 today. Happy birthday, Gretchen. And happy birthday to Mets uh, public relations assistant, Chris Tropiano. Now, I'm told that Tropiano is 28, which immediately leads me to ask if he was born in the Dominican. I think we need a birth certificate <laughs> check on that one. Frank Brazell. We're going to start today for the Mets. Power head of the farm system. Oh, there's Down Jay. Down. Saw Jay Horowitz uh, this spring. A nice picture of him in a paper. Al Leiter in a swimming pool here oh, working wow. out. Jay was flexing his muscles. There's no doubt about it. Jay is on the juice. No doubt. You ever see that bad body? <laughs> it was a, quite a picture of Jay. 25 Can I ask you what kind is he? <laughs> Orange juice. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Joe McEwing at the plate. Joe getting a chance to uh, play just about every inning here at shortstop while Matsui heals. Good opportunity for Joe McEwing. It's a great opportunity. Get a good plane shape. Joe continuing to work on that swing. He, he said no one really, uh, no one really suggested to him to eliminate that big leg kick. He said he just. Last year decided to modify it, and now this year really almost entirely eliminate that high leg kick. Well, he was really unsuccessful with the high leg kick. Mm -hmm. Got to get that front foot down. Hey. 
Joey, uh, it's one of the things, again, you sort of lose track of over the course of the winter. I didn't realize how little outfield Joe McEwing played last year after being a guy who, of all people, Tony La Russa had used as a big-time utility man. And then when he came to the Mets, he was. And last year, Joe started only seven games in the outfield all year. He started the final day of the year as we see Matsui come up. Joe started the center field. And it opened up Art House. I say you can play center field, huh? You know, Art, lo he, Art loves him, and Tony La Russa loved him. Yep. Unfortunately, when you're a utility player, they have to make a move if a team is losing. A lot of times they'll move the utility player, and it broke Tony La Russa's heart when they did that. Supon starts Matsui here with a breaking ball. Matsui doubled over first base over the glove of Albert Pujols. In the first inning. Pulls another one. So he's pulled two here to start the game. That one hopper right to the first baseman. The better swings from Matsui than we saw a couple of nights ago. Absolutely. Well, it's not just, well, actually it is. It's MSG in Florida Day. We've got Mets baseball in the daytime and tonight right here. Just south of here, the Rangers and the Panthers. Rangers game night comes your way at 7, the game at 7.30 right here on MSG Network. Joe Whalen's leading the road trip. He's taking us all down. Joe's got us all perfect seats right down by the ice. You know those big money seats. That's right, Joe, longtime producer yeah. for the New York Rangers. I, I am not sure whose idea was to build the hockey arena in South Florida where they did. Trust me, you can't find it unless you know where it is. <laughs> I mean, it is in the middle of nowhere. Basically, if you miss the hockey arena, your next stop's the Everglades. <laughs> I'm serious. Albert Pujols quickly falls behind two strikes. Pujols tried to check his swing, was unable to do so. We showed some numbers. Pujols has put up his first three years in the big leagues, and they are unbelievable numbers. Yeah, but you know what the best number he just got was? An eight-year contract. Almost 100. Yeah. Was it 100 million? Somewhere in the neighborhood. 100 million, and that uh, is, a, is really a smart move by the Cardinals yeah, to I make agree. sure that they don't ever have any future hassles and near future hassles with this guy. Very popular player as a member of the St. Louis Cardinals. Grew up in Kansas City, I'm sure. Kansas City Royal fans like to know that the kid grew up in Kansas City. He's in St. Louis. Albert Pujols, uh, to his credit, and this is a terrific young man, very poised, very mature, and Tony La Russa knows it well. Albert said the first thing he said after he signed the contract was that he was going to build, he's going to start off with one. It may develop beyond that, but at least one brand new baseball stadium in the Dominican Republic, his home That's country. There, he said this morning there, he's got people looking for land right now that they think would be the best place to build it. Well, the Cardinals have their anchors set, Pujols and Roland, are both on long-term contracts. And it's important in a city like St. Louis where they embrace this team. It's by far and away the biggest thing that really in the state of Missouri, St. Louis Cardinals baseball. Shot right there, Reyes for the out. You know, it's, it's, you mentioned the Cardinals, and you mentioned the number of teams that take pride in tradition, and there is a great deal of tradition in St. Louis with the Cardinals. If you look at the stands today here at Tradition Field in Port St. Lucie, Florida, you will see a lot of Cardinal fans yeah. with the red shirts and the Cardinal caps. Go to a game at Bush Stadium, and that's all you see is red shirts. I mean, they have uniforms for the fans. And one of the strengths of this franchise, the Cardinal franchise, as well as anybody in the game, they embrace their history. And speaking of Mets history and tradition, how about that Bob Murphy is here today to make his spring training appearance. Good to see the Murph here in Florida where he makes his home now. Had a chance to uh, visit a little bit with Murph and he's uh, Enjoying his time, relaxing with his wife Joy, just uh, down in Palm Beach Gardens. So in fact, his wife Joy is here at the ballpark with him. Mm -hmm. One and two now to wit. But uh, the Cardinals, 
example, Tony La Russa said tomorrow they'll play a game at their home field down in Jupiter, south of here. So before the game, he'll look around and it'll be Bob Gibson, Lou Brock, Red Shandienst, among others, will all be out signing autographs for the fans. Nice pitch, the split there by Traxel. That gets Witt swinging for our number two. Now Roland, who popped up his first time, even though he didn't play the majority of his career there, another guy that will always be known as a Cardinal, is coming back for the first time since he retired in mid-April. Mark McGuire will set foot on a baseball field. He'll be back at Bush Stadium to be honored before a Cardinal game. The only, only real public appearance Mark McGuire has made since he retired was to attend Jack Buck's funeral, which was held in Bush Stadium. But this will be the first time he's back at a ball game. Very close to Tony La Russa. In fact, Tony had him in Oakland when he managed out there. Strikes now. It's about the only manager I have to check McGuire's record. I think it, he might have played a little bit for Art. Did he play for Art? I think he did Other because Tony was, was gone. Right. And, and, and uh, Mark was still. So the remember, I can't remember what year it was, so, but that'd be it. The only two managers McGuire ever played for them would be La Russa and Art. Hatton. I asked a trainer with the Cardinals, Barry Weinberg, who was also the trainer with Tony La Russa when he had Mark McGuire and Jose Canseco, and Barry was always the was a trainer with the Yankees with Reggie Jackson, guys like that. I said, who's the strongest guy you ever worked at? He said, the strongest guy I ever worked at. Excluding no, you, of course. Right. And nobody is even close. Dave King. I would believe that. I would believe that. But Kingman was, uh, you know, Kingman was the natural strength. I mean, Kingman. From what you could tell, I don't think him was a big weightlifter, was he? Well, you know, he, he got into weights, lifting weights, when he appeared and competed in the Superstars event. Is that right? Yeah, I remember that. But uh, he said that, that nobody was even close. Not Conseco, not McGuire, Dave King. Tom Glavin made his second start yesterday for the Mets in Lakeland. Gave up a first inning home run to Rondell White. It was the, was the first runs given up by a Mets starting pitcher this spring. Glavin went on to pitch three scoreless innings after that first. Kaz Matsui and Shane Spencer had two hits each. Spencer and uh, Kareem Garcia. Ty Wiggins and Jason Phillips all went on the trip today. That's why they're not here. They're down in Fort Lauderdale playing with the Mets split squad. Traxel has a good inning, two strikeouts. We'll go to the bottom of the third, 4-2 Mets. April 12th opening day at Shea, the Mets and the Atlanta Braves. Mets will open up with their first six games this year on the road. And an early home series of note which will be the one and only appearance of the San Francisco Giants and Barry Bonds at Shea, which is on May 4th, 5th, and 6th, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights, the second home stand of the year. Looking back to first inning, Jose Reyes making contact. And hustling all the way to third base. He led with his face right here, though. He hit that ball right off the end of the bat. Well, he's at two in a row like that, and he's got two hits for him. And once again, you get the, the anxiety on the defensive part with the speed on first base. Oh, you tell oh, the hitters, oh, yeah. put the ball in play. I thought that was Kanger's corner for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, Reyes, he's music to your ears, isn't he? It's good speed. We'll see if they put him in motion now. He's got Cliff Floyd hitting. Will Art Howe say, you know, why put him in motion? We got it. We'll keep the hole open, which I think is really overrated. That hole between first and second. So Floyd, who grounded out his first time, and Piazza behind him.
Well, what a luxury. You can put Reyes in motion and steal a base. They still have to pitch to Floyd with a runner in scoring position because they're not going to walk Floyd and go after Piazza. Hart wheels to make the play at second. No return throw. Cardinals let Fernando Vina go as a free agent. And they've got a competition at that second base job. Bo Hart playing today. Marlon Anderson, the former Philly. They're pretty much the two uh, guys that seem to be the front runners for that. Tino Martinez, they let him go to Tampa Bay. Moving Pujols into play first base. And that leaves them, the Cardinals with a question in left field. Kind of surprising that Tampa Bay picked up that contract because they are so concerned with picking up contracts. But they picked up the first base of Martinez, who grew up in Tampa. So Piazza rounded out his first time. Now there's been a little chatter around Metcamp this week about health and nagging problems as Cliff Floyd back fully from his surgery. Mike Cameron's playing with a, a bone spur on his big toe. Cliff and sometimes those, well, go ahead. Excuse me, Ted. Cliff told me today in the dugout that he's about 80%. Yeah. And sometimes those things get magnified. Oftentimes, the more guys talk about it, they become a little self-fulfilling. But w even without that, I'm just thinking the Mets have nothing to be concerned about vis-a-vis, -vis, let's say, the Cardinals, whose center fielder, there's all-star Jim Edmonds, and their number two starter, Woody Williams, have yet to, to do anything in anger. Edmonds is coming off shoulder surgery. Tony La Russa is hopeful that he'll be able to get into a game by next week. And Williams... Just threw BP yesterday. He hasn't been pitching the ball game. He threw BP yesterday. He was their all-star pitcher last year. And he'd be number two in their rotation behind Matt Morris. So and there are other teams with far more important situations. Preston Wilson in Colorado hasn't played the game yet this spring. He's battling injury. The squibber off Piazza's bat pools. Now he turns out to a double play. With Supon covering it first. Well, Albert Pools looked pretty nifty at his new position. He ran a long way for that ball. He was down by second base. Tony La Russa is one of the most successful managers in baseball today. And I asked him before the ball game today, give us a quick rundown of your club this year. Well, I, you know, we're not getting a lot of talk. But uh, from what I've seen in camp, we really like our pitching, which is going to be really important in our division. Got a lot of starters coming around. We like our bullpen. So I like our pitching, uh, and everybody, I think, agrees that our position players, we have a core of guys that catch the ball and hit it. So I think we're going to be good. You had to be caught completely by surprise by Albert Pujols. Well, uh, surprised that he would be this great this early, Fran, but the first year in the organization, you know, he was an A ball, and then he went to Triple A to be in the playoffs, and the two managers just raved about his, his potential and how good he was going to be. We just didn't think it was going to happen this soon. You manage a lot of great players. Is this kid as good as any of them? Well, he'd be tied for first. I mean, you're, I look back over the years, I mean, you know, Fisk and Conseco and Henderson and McGuire and his guy. I mean, you know, there's so many great players. He's in that same class. And then, according to the book, he's the best in the first three years in the history of the game. I mean, this guy is, there ain't anything he doesn't do that all the great hitters do. And the key is to keep doing it. You hear uh, a lot of, about the word tradition, and this is tradition field. The Cardinals tradition, what's it mean to you? Well, that's one of the neatest things about being around. And it starts with you walk in a ballpark, and almost every day, Shane Deans, Musial, Brock, Gibson, I mean, they're, you know, Ozzie Smith, they're all a part of just the day to day stuff that goes on there. You feel the tradition all the time. Then you have the fans, you have the media that, you know, the organization talks about keeping the tradition going. So you feel, feel a responsibility. To, to you know, to have a year that, that fits into their history, you know, you're kind of embarrassed when you let them down. How about the numbers this kid has put up right there, Ted? It's astounding. 
And uh, again, what jumps out to me is, is that Ralph Kiner, you know, you wouldn't think about that, but Ralph's the only man to hit as many home runs as Pujols in his first three seasons of baseball. Well, Ralph led the National League in home runs seven straight years. That is just foul wide of third off the bat of Bo Hart. Grant Roberts getting ready down there in the Mets pen. As Traxel works his fourth inning. First baseman Al this year. Yep, Albert Pools is 24 years old. You remember last year he played with a torn el uh, elbow ligament. And because Tino Martinez was still a Cardinal, they had to keep Pools in the outfield. And they crossed their fingers quite a bit, hoped that he would not have to make a, a dramatic throw that would really aggravate that injury enough that he'd need surgery. Now there's Red Shane, 81 years young, still hitting fungos before the game today. Hart pops this up, and it's Craig Brazell coming in for first base to make the catch. Mike Matheny. I, I'd have to look back. I can't recall how old he was when he finally was had to put the fungo bat away. But of course, Jimmy Reese. Oh, legendary. Fungoed, uh, went back to Babe Ruth's days with the Yankees. Jimmy Reese was a coach with the Angels and fungoed into his 80s. And he could handle the fungo bat like nobody else. I believe Jimmy Reese at one time roomed with Babe Ruth. Yes. I'll tell you who he was very close to. In fact, I think Nolan Ryan named one of his sons after yes, he did. Jimmy Reese. Exactly right. They were extremely close. So Red Shandings is uh, entering in that entering that category. Is he hitting ground balls to the Cardinal infielders? Also here today is a guy that finished his career as a Cardinal, although he's known for playing with other teams, Will Clark. Mark McGuire got hurt. I believe it was the 2000 season. The Cardinals brought Clark in the second half of the year. It was it 2000 against the Mets in the uh, playoffs, right? Clark had a great run for the Cardinals. That ball's going to be carried by the win, but stay in the park as Floyd puts it away. So Traxel may be finished, retires the last seven that he's finished. That place has been jumping since Stefan Marbury joined that ball club. Young Met fans enjoying the sun out on the Berman right field. And there is, well, he was known simply as Thrill when he first came to the big leagues, Will Clark. Great start to his career in San Francisco. It uh, stalled a bit when he went to the American League, and then it was the 2000 season. The Cardinals brought him over to replace Mark McGuire. And Clark uh, just had a spectacular second half. That was the Cardinal team that ended up playing the Mets for the National League pennant. And drive dropped there by the shortstop Luna, but he recovers and throws out Cameron. Well, when it's hit hard off your bat, you figure it's going to be caught when it hits the guy's glove at shortstop. Unfortunately, most players tend to stop when it goes in that glove. When it pops out, you try to turn it on, but you make a lot of people unhappy. So Todd Zeal batting. That's got four in the first inning off Supon. And the big blow was this two out three run shot from Zeal. Well, he got all of that. Ball was down and in. He went down there and tattooed it over the left field fence. Todd Zeal, he's ready to go. Let's have a uh, bench that will be. Uh, Slightly revamped from last year with Grant Roberts getting ready to pitch. Zeal was mentioned will be basically the, the big right hand bat off the bench. And that left handed bat off the bench is a situation that's still up in the air. Basically, the Mets looking for someone to replace Tony Clark's power off the bench. Nice play by Luna and the pick by Pujols to gun down Zeal. That was a good play, and Luna knew. That he had to get the ball across the infield in a hurry, and if he bounces the ball, he still has a chance to get Todd Zeal at first. And he gave a good hop to Pujols. You just don't want to short hop the, or the first base. You know what? In between hop, you want the good hop. Nice play by Luna. 
Sedeno the batter now with two outs. Tapped out to first base his first time. Strike two to Cedeno. Well, Roger Cedeno will certainly get a lot of playing time here in spring training. Mets are hoping that he can help the ball, but if not, give him enough playing time where you get somebody interested in him. Yep. And pigs fly too, right? <laughs> <laughs> so are they still flying. Mets go out. We're through four. It's four two, New York. Hey, Mets fans, visit Mets.com, the number one site for live game pitch-by-pitch pitch coverage. MLB TV and MLB.com, game day audio. Mets.com, where Mets baseball is always on. Get to find out and hear about Mike Cameron. You can go to Mets.com. And also, this guy right here, who's been not a surprise, but I guess a pleasant surprise. He's healthy this spring. He's throwing the ball hard. One time he was the number one pitching prospect with the Mets and they want to give him a chance to go out there and become a starter against a great idea. Well Robertson signed on on that. Oh yes. This is a, he was a starter all the way through his minor league career. Mets made him a reliever in 0, in 01. And Grant reluctantly did it. He is, uh, was never really able to demonstrate the ability to pitch back to back days. He can't be a reliever without them. So, 34 games out of a pen in 02 before getting hurt. Spent the first part of last year rehabbing. Finally made 18 appearances for the Mets in the second half of the year. So, Luna is thrown out by Joe McEwing. Grant Roberts has some solid spring numbers, really impressing Art Howe. And he's one of these guys that gets the ball up there in the low 90s and take a look at his numbers right there. Now 26 years old and he's been in the organization a long time. This is his 10th year as a high school signee, 10th season in the Mets organization. He's an example of a kid who was one of the best high school pitchers in the country when he was in high school. But he pitched all year and he admits now he pitched too much. They say Taguchi. Drove in a run his last time up with a single. One one out of the Cardinal outfielder. Taguchi was a member of Japan's Olympic team in 2000. He was one of four Japan Major League players who played on that team, but you can tell by looking at him, not much of a hitting threat. And he's facing Grant Roberts, who's in the in the mix. They're fighting it out for this. Look at there, right there. Fifth dimension. Roberts, Yates, Heilman, Baldwin, Griffiths, and Erickson. Three and one now. Roberts pitching here. Tyler Yates. Starting today's game for the Mets in Fort Lauderdale. Another hard thrower. And he's in the mix. Scott Erickson, who had a good outing Wednesday night, will pitch Monday. That'll be his next outing. Aaron Howman got himself back in the running with his strong game Thursday night. The one thing the Mets are trying to come up with now is some hard throwers. It's not to say they don't have some guys. But Art, uh, Al Leiter is a hard thrower. And they want to get some other hard throwers on the staff. And Graham Roberts is a guy that they're giving this opportunity to. And Yates, another one. I know when you catch him, you can't beat that hard thrower when you fall behind 2 0. There's Al Leiter. He's got a young arm. 
Brown had surgery when he was younger. Now it looks like he can throw all day. I don't know if this is uh, what this means here. I'm just looking at these radar readings. That pitch is 83 miles an hour from Grant Roberts. That's not an overpowering fastball. I was just going to say that that's clearly a concern. They were impressed with his velocity early on here in spring training. And when he was in the minor leagues, he threw hard prior to hurting his arm. Another 83. I don't know if he's trying to do that on purpose. Maybe he's just taking a little bit off his yeah. fastball, huh? He, was at one, uh, he had one in 89 this inning. Well, one of the secrets to pitching, if you watch Tom Glavin, who has had a great career, he is you have a fastball. Everybody worries about, you know, I need a, a slider, a over the top curveball, a slurp. You take that fastball and you change off the fastball three different speeds. It's three different pitches. And it's a lot easier on the arm. The times you usually hurt your arm is when you're overextending the arm, hyperextending the arm, and the slider will do it. The curveball thrown in properly, you can have some problems. But if you can change speeds off that fastball, but you have to establish good velocity, then you work down from that good velocity. This is a breaking ball. Yeah. I've had uh, hitters tell me that Maddox is the best in this generation at doing that, at having three or four different fastballs. I mean, you can just he is. take two miles off, he can take four miles off, he can slip that B, what they call a BP fastball. Scott Erickson looking on, but yeah, Maddox certainly was one of the tops. I'd put Glavin up there also. Right. Moving to second base and holding there is Taguchi. Take a look at this ball again. That might be out to field barehanded. Throws a second base. And it scoots into center field. <laughs> We're talking about Mike Piazza and the throwing. On the other side of the field, but, uh, Mike Matheny is a gold glove winner. For the second time last year, threw out just 23% that mm -hmm. would be base stealers. And the one thing I'm sure that might be odds, the one thing that keeps him awake at night is throwing. Because he knows that his velocity is good enough. He just has to get his confidence back and getting the ball to second base in the air. I think you do that enough, then you can speed up. You, you won't be as methodical. You'll be aggressive behind the play. But it's easier said than done. Two balls, one strike. I'll tell you, the, the thing that I had and a number of catchers have had over the years is, is uh, you can't throw the ball back to the pitcher. You want to talk about staying awake at night. Well, the Piazza throwing issue really, to me, comes down to two elements. One is Florida, and it, it gets exaggerated because the Mets play the Marlins so many times. But that's the one team that really runs. I mean, the stolen base is not employed by a, a lot of National League teams right now. Well, the Marlins do. And then the second factor is the combination of Mike catching Al Leiter, who is a guy who's a little bit more deliberate to the plate and has to struggle to hold runners on. I think you would not necessarily forget the problem or de-emphasize the problem, but it would help if every throw that Mike made was in the air to second base. And Mike knows it. I mean, you know, get it down to the second base and where yeah. he catches the ball in the air. Even if the runner's safe, it, it's, it's not as glaring a problem. Two holes, fouls it away. The Marlins last year led the league with 150 steals as a team, so almost one steal a game. They're going to do it again yeah. under McKeon, believe me. Se second in the league. Okay, 150 led the league. Second in the league was Montreal at 100. Mm -hmm. I, mean, just tell, I mean, I just tell you that, that the Marlins were the one team in the league that really ran, and that's the one team, again, because the Mets play them so often, it clearly accentuated the throwing troubles Piazza has. Who holds us? Fly to right and grounded to second today. If he keeps the inning going. Kevin Witt will bat.
Well, Mike Piazza has played some first base down here. Art Howell's a little bit concerned because his, his knee is still a little bit tender. The knee he hurt while playing first base. So they want him completely healed before they put him over there again. Ooh, oh, wow. He hit the ball at the end of the bat. Man, that's a... I hope it's the end of the bat. A little shard there. And one for the dugout store. <laughs> Used to give those bats away to fans. Not anymore. Mm -mm. Right off the end of the bat. Some of those bats have an indentation at the end. And when it hits that, the, the far end of the bat will just shatter your bat. You hope that's all that bat has in it. I know. I know. We had a team years ago. We used to load up our bats. Every, oh, time really? we, oh, we, every time we traded a player, we had to stop using the, our game bats. <laughs> and you know what? The cork thing has not been proven to help the fly the ball. It's really blown out of proportion. I forget who said it. It was a very appropriate line a couple of years ago. 3-2 now to Pujols. It was a pitcher referencing bats. Someone got caught and he said, I'm not worried about the bats being corked. I'm worried about the arms oh, being corked. Absolutely. The hitter's arms. Well, I know uh, years ago uh, they used to check George Foster's bat when he was with the Cincinnati Reds. And uh, Johnny Bench was the first one ever to say, you know what? Don't check his bat. Check his arms. But he meant because he was strong at the time. That would change today. Threw him a breaking ball there. Pujols fouls it. So a good little test here for Grant Roberts. Battle against one of the game's best hitters. It's a little unusual look for Roberts. He's got one sleeve going. Finally, the fastball is low. You know, I think you could complain about it, although it's, it, it is a, a blue-colored yeah, shirt. It's dark, so. But, you know, you could always go out there and if he's pitching a masterpiece and you're the other manager, just go out and complain that he's, it's not uniformed. Although I've never read the rule book where they said you have to have both arms covered. So Kevin Witt bats first and second and two down for the Cardinals in the fifth. Sharply hit into right field. Taguchi's going to come in to score. So the Cardinals have climbed back within a run. It's now four to three. Mets. So two walks in the inning by Brad Roberts come back to bite him. 84 miles per hour right there. That was a pitch that said hit me and hit me hard. And that ball was hit with a great deal of velocity into right field. And Roberts is obviously working on something. Is this just that velocity is too yeah. down to from his norm. So it's getting the talk here from Rick Peterson. For facing Scott Rowland. So Rick Peterson, who is going to have his philosophy move not only in the major leagues, but throughout the minor leagues, his pitching philosophy, which is very progressive and advanced. And we've already seen it here. The Mets minor league pitchers and catchers have been here for over a week now. 
on all the backfields. Dan Worthen. A lot of lefties in the Mets system. Dan Worthen's pitching coach at AAA. Jerry Royce has joined the Mets organization this year. He'll be the AA pitching coach. What can he pitch? Ooh. There are the backfields back behind Tradition Field. I haven't seen him today, but Lenny Dykstra's supposed to be here. Tomorrow. Tomorrow it is. Tomorrow. Okay. Yep. It's a Mets outfield instructor. He was a very, very popular player with the Mets. Traded away for Juan Samuel. Two strikes to Roland. Got him. Oh, good fast. Got up a little bit more there. Roberts been working on a cut fastball. That might have left be a little bit of it. Maybe, but that one there, he got up the 87 miles per yeah. hour. You can hear the glove pop. That's what they want to hear. Yep. Finally gets out of the inning. Craig Brazell, 24 year, lead 24 coming up in May. Left handed batter with some pop. 17 homers last year for the Mets at Binghamton, double A. It's a catcher, high school. Signed with the Mets, then moved to first base. And He's a young man trying to impress, getting a chance with the split squad game today. But facing a left-hander, we're going to find out actually in this inning if Kaz Matsui will turn around to bat right-handed for the first time. Facing Chris Narvison. This is one of the prize prospects of the Cardinal system. 22-year-old lefty, second round draft pick in 2000, and he's coming back from Tommy John surgery. Isn't everyone? I'm. I have not had it. I wanted to know right now. <laughs> I have not yet had Tommy John surgery. Oh, that's a good cool. swing by that's Brazil. A, that's a good call. That's a quick bat. Well, he gets around this ball from a left-hander, as Ted mentioned, a high, highly thought of prospect. He gets ahead of the bat out mm -hmm. there in a hurry. Rizal was a little frustrated that he did not get a September call-up last year. I like it. And so, yeah, he's trying to uh, use every chance he can here this spring to show the Mets that they missed out on something. Heard him talking to Cliff Floyd in the dugout uh -huh. today before the game, yeah. talking about getting a heavier bat and getting it started quicker. You know, you, you like it when a young player feels that he belongs in the big leagues. And clearly, Brazil feels he belongs in the big leagues. The only thing is you get a temper. You can't be running around screaming at the manager, but it, it's good that you know, he felt yeah. he should be called up. Well, there's a story right there. Prentice Redman has come to the on-deck circle, so Kaz Matsui will not bat right-handed. You know, and speaking of Matsui, he's he's been impressive with the speed of his bat for somebody that's nursing a bad finger. His bat is very quick. Yeah. It's frustrating right now for everybody. I'm certain, including Matsui, because this recovery's taking just a little bit longer than he everyone, including himself, would like. That's the double hit earlier in the ball game. Quick bat, get the head out, hit the ball down the right field line, hit a bullet. Mets have talked to him about not thinking home run ball at Shea Stadium. They want him to make contact. We're talking about Matsui. Put the ball in play, use the whole field, get on base. Because he can clearly run. That's one thing you can count on every day. If you have good speed, it's going to be with you unless you're injured. Defense, you can usually count that defense. Well, one thing you can be sure of, if you sign to play for the Mets, and this would apply to 99.9% .9 of the hitters, McEwing gets a double play ball here. And the Cardinals turn it. Hector Luna and Bo Hart start it. So two down and Redmond will bat. But, you know, maybe Mike Piazza is the exception on this team to that. But you can pretty much forget about your chances of winning the home run title. Yes. <laughs> so just forget it. And that goes back to the point you made. Your approach has to be different as a hitter. 
when you play half your games at Shea. Yeah, Mike Piazza, as you mentioned, might have a shot. Although, if he catches a whole lot, I, I, that's that's real tough. But, you, you know, earlier in this ball game today, it was exciting to watch Matsui and Reyes mm -hmm. do their act. And that's what the Mets want. And if they get that, it's going to be an exciting summer at Shea Stadium. Prentice Redman, another one of the multitudes of minor leaguers who got a call up last year. And he goes down swinging to put an end to the inning. So leadoff walk, Mets aren't able to cash in. Beautiful afternoon in Florida. Mets with the lead as we go to the sixth. Sixth inning in Port St. Lucie, Mets got four in the first. Cardinals have come back with two in the second, one in the fifth. John Gall leading off against Grant Roberts. He just tuned in that four and the first. It was an exciting first inning with Reyes and Matsui, something that we've heard a lot about. The Mets are certainly hoping that they'll be consistent and healthy and be able to get out there every day during the course of the season. But this guy, you know, we've said it before, he lifted the whole organization last year when he came up. You come to the ballpark when you're broadcasting the game and you look at the lineup. And if he wasn't in the lineup, he didn't feel good. He just brought that energy and excitement. And they're hoping Matsui will combine with Reyes to double it. Reyes played 69 games last year. And the Mets don't have, they don't list in their book the overall record with players in the game. But I know this Reyes went out with an injury. When the Mets played the Braves, the first series of September last year. As Gall flares one to right. And uh, that falls for a hit. Ball was up there a while, and uh, Sedano didn't get close to it. So Gall is on with a hit, and we'll bring up Bo Hart. The Mets went four and 19 after Reyes went down September last year. Four and 19. Well, you know, it's funny. It, you, you would hear Mike Piazza talking about the energy that Reyes brought to the team, and you hear the other players talk about it. Al Leiter, Tom Glavin. And you, I mean, you're talking about some some serious veterans there, talking about a young player coming out of the minor leagues and lifting the major league team. So Bo Hart takes a strike. Oh, I think what's very important for this Mets team this year, because clearly the Mets have begun to, to travel a new path. And a plan in place to try to capitalize on what the Mets have to work with, which is a bigger park at Shea, a park that emphasizes pitching, that emphasizes defense. You know, to, to start to rebuild a system, which you're, here in the spring games, you see the fruits of it. You start to see some young players that have chances for the Mets. And I, and I think it's important to capitalize on that word you mentioned, friend, the energy. Oh, absolutely. That, that the Matsui and the Reyes spring, that the fans embraced so much at Shea last year with Reyes. They haven't seen Kaz yet. And to really put as much of a new face on things, building around those two and what they bring as possible. It's funny when you uh, think of, uh, you mentioned Nails, and Lenny Dykstra will be here tomorrow. When he played at the Mets, he brought that energy along. Mookie Wilson, even though they played the same position, occasionally they would be in the game. One would be in center field, one would be in left field, and they brought that energy to the game. There's, that's, that's rusty, right? <laughs> yeah, you didn't recognize him right away. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I didn't recognize <laughs> Bill Webb thought it was Lenny Dykstra, and he did say uh, it was number four. It was rusty with the big swing. And you know what? Uh, he didn't have the same speed as these guys. But he could he could play. Talk about rusty. And of course, who could forget 1986? Wow. Hart lays off, so 3-2. This uh, 
This outing has not been as smooth for Grant so far as the, his previous bouts this spring. It's been, uh, been a little erratic. Seems like he's jumping at the hitter. Not in control of himself. It's a strikeout there. Throw high, and John Gall able to steal. And Bo Hart's mad at himself. He swung a ball four. Well, the Cardinals for years have been a running ball club, and once again, right here, Mike Piazza getting the ball down to second base high, and the Cardinals pick up another stolen base. That was a perfect pitch to throw. Yeah. So Emil Brown, former Pittsburgh Pirates outfielder, pinch hitter here for Mike Mathi. Or, well, I'm not sure who he's batting for. He's batting in <laughs> Matheny's spot, but Cody McKay had already come in to catch for the Cardinals. So I'm, anyway, he's batting. We know that. As we say in spring training, if you're scoring at home, you need help. That's right. <laughs> because we barely do it here. Right. Nick the bat, so that's a strike. And another strike, one and two. Bear Moreno scheduled to, to pitch today for the Mets after Roberts. And rookie or minor leaguer Bob Keppel also on the list today may pitch before this one's over. Runner at third now with two outs. And here's our upcoming TV schedule. Tomorrow on WB11, you get the Twins and the Mets. And next Sunday, WB11, Houston. Should say the Dodgers. And then you got Houston on the 24th and on the 27th, the Atlanta Braves. And then it's heading to opening day in Atlanta. Let's that's, go that's to Puerto Rico right after right. three in Atlanta. And then it, back to Shea opening day on the 12th against the Atlanta Braves. You see Reyes, Matsui, Cameron, Mike Piaz, Cliff Floyd. Al Leiter, Tom Glab. Two strikes now to Luna. So Luna delivered a two out RBI hit in the second inning. If he can do the same here, he'd tie the game. John Gall, the runner at third, two down. This one bounced to the right side. Reyes makes the play, so Grant Roberts survives the leadoff hit. And we go to the bottom of the sixth at Port St. Lucie. The Mets still up by one. So the bottom of the sixth, Jose Reyes turns around to bat right-handed against left-hander Chris Narvison. And joining us from the Mets dugout after his four-inning stint and some subsequent running is Steve Traxel. How you doing, Steve? Doing good, guys. You didn't get to hit today. Didn't get to hit again. <laughs> How'd you feel on the mound, Steve? Uh, felt all right. Not early as uh, kind of struggling a little bit getting the ball down. Oh, there's a rope. You know, the ball was up in the zone. Is uh, you know, obviously giving up a lot of line drives, and uh, it's actually my third time facing these guys in a row. So uh, <laughs> had to make a couple adjustments there uh, towards the end of the second and into the third. So uh, it's good to you know he, finally have to battle a little bit. Is that right? Even in spring training, you do that if you've seen the same hitters. Well, they were hitting them back at me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's self-defense. Yeah, then. and they were, they were all pretty much on uh, on splits or fastballs away. So, uh, you know, we had mm -hmm. to mix it up and throw a few more fastballs in and, and uh, get that split down in the dirt where it's supposed to be. Steve, how important will this new double play combination be to you? Your thoughts on the two Matsui and Reyes? Oh, it's going to be crucial. There's no doubt about it. Uh, you know, my, my whole style of pitching is, is that I want the, every single pitch to be put in play. And... Uh, you know, if, if I'm on and I'm getting ground balls, then, uh, you know, 
if I can only have to throw two or three pitches per hitter, then that, that's going to allow me to go deeper. And, and uh, you know, if I'm able to work quick and keep them on their toes, then uh, you know, it's going to calculate into you know, lots of innings and wins and everything. So. And take that a step further, Steve, and add in Cameron in center field. Exactly, exactly. You know, uh, you're going to be able to challenge guys, especially once we have the lead. You know, uh, Shea Stadium, obviously, we know deep, deep center field. So, uh, you know, have those righties hit that fastball away to center all, all day long. Steve, we were talking up here about Shea Stadium, not necessarily a hitter's ballpark. When you go on the mound, does that run through your mind, or you don't care about the park? No, nah, I really don't care too much about the park. And, uh, you know, obviously coming from the Cubs, you know, you're, they always taught you to look at the flags, and I think that's the worst thing in the world you can do. So, uh, you know, I've kind of trained myself to not really pay attention to where I'm pitching, but uh, as to who I'm pitching and just executing the you know, good pitches. When you think back, Stephen, I don't know if you did this over the winter, what do you think was the reason, reasons for your career best season last year? Given the fact, uh, quite frankly, given the fact the team was not successful well, yet you were yeah I mean obviously early early on uh, you know had a lot of no decisions early but uh, as, the, as the year progressed especially the last couple months uh, we seem to get a lot of a lot of clutch hits uh, and definitely score a little few more runs in my starts the last couple months I thought I felt like I threw the ball pretty well all year and uh, just you know tried to continue that through the season but uh, I know I remember Jason Phillips must have got uh, you know 10 or 12 you know two out RBIs you know in my last four or five starts so uh, that you know those types of things are, are what winning teams are gonna have to do and, and definitely help the pitchers numbers and the story goes when Jason Phillips came up you were warming up in the bullpen in San Francisco <laughs> and said when they announced him at first base he's turned to the pitcher coach said does he play first yes yeah, had no idea <laughs> yeah it was uh, kind of went out there didn't see, really see who, who we had playing and uh, they, had, they announced the lineup and I turned around and talk to Vern so like Jason Phillips can play first base. <laughs> I mean, I'd never even seen him take a ground ball over there. So, uh. you know, Steve, all we have here was Piazza Bats here. Let me ask you as a veteran, one name we haven't had a chance to see yet on TV and talk much about is Tommy Glavin. Give us an yeah. idea. What, what, do you sense anything different with Tom? Any more determination this spring? You know what? He, 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 he just goes about his business the same way he always does. Uh, you know, he, I, I haven't sensed any changes or anything. And, and you know, he's just... You know, he'll tell you the same thing. He just needs to execute his pitches a little bit better. And, uh, you know, a guy like that, you know, you let him do their work. He knows exactly how many pitches he needs to throw his first batting practice and how many pitches he needs to throw his first game. And, and uh, you know, a guy like me, I need somebody to tell me all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, Steve, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, guys. See Steve, Steve Traxel with four innings today. Being followed by Grant Roberts for two. One, one here to Piazza. And Mike's going to be on board. His first hit. Well, this is getting uh, serious here. The Mets have got these guys out there playing six innings now. Good idea. <laughs> you know what? Well, good idea unless you're one of the players. Well, you know, now, here comes Piazza's coming out actually you know right fine? now. It's baseball. I can understand it if you like digging ditches. You'd like to be relieved. But it's baseball. <laughs> So Mike is out. Essex Sneed will pinch run for him. And it's Major League Baseball. It does beat a real job, doesn't oh. it? Oh. Different managers or managers have different views of how they treat spring up. Been around some managers. That ball shot by Cameron to right field for a hit. Sneed will fly. He's to third easily. Cameron on with a hit. His first. He went to right field very yeah. well with that ball. And that's what the that's Mets exactly wanted to do. Exactly right. That you talk about a guy they want to adapt to Shea Stadium. This is it with this yeah. swing. And you know what? This will cut down his strikeouts if he thinks middle of the plate, hit the ball the other way. Don't try to pull it. You'll pull it when you have to pull it. Well, if Charlie Finley were still around, this would be a guy he'd look at for a designated runner. This sneak can fly. Yeah, I played against his designated runner was Herb Washington. Yeah. You know what we used to do to him because he didn't play baseball. We used to throw first base all the time. He ended up starting for first base and used it as a starter's block. He wouldn't even take a lead. We had him so intimidated with throws over there. For Washington back uh, was one year in the mid 70s. Charlie Finley he was a track star. Yeah. Never played baseball. Charlie Finley signed him just used him as a pinch runner. Designated runner. It was a good gimmick. Emphasis on gimmick. <laughs> That's right. Better gimmick than good, right? That's right. 
So Todd Zeal, three run homer in the first inning, and then he was robbed of a hit by the shortstop the second time. You know, you're talking about Cameron, we hit the ball the right field. Uh, Denny Wally wants him to think, at least for the early part of spring training, go that way. They want him to cut down on strikeouts. And also, they want Matsui to cut down on his strikeouts. One one to Zeal. Sneed and Cameron are the base runners. Okay, there we go. That's not rusty. That's nails. Lenny Dykstra. He'll be in camp tomorrow. That sliding style. That's not rusty. No, no. That's rusty right there. The sweet swing. He could hit. Big guy. He wasn't that big back then. You gonna finish that sentence? Well, <laughs> I've had dinner with him. <laughs> Ooh, Zeal not gonna be happy with that call. Two and two. You get mad with the umpire even in spring, huh? Oh, absolutely. A guy like Todd Zeal still wants to impress the Mets where, you know, he can get a lot of playing time. He down deep is not going to say, I'm a utility player, although he is penciled in right now. Right to this day, Todd Zeal feels he can play someplace every day for the Mets. And that's what's going to make him so very important to the Mets. I'm on the clubhouse. I mean, he's a take charge guy in that clubhouse. Yeah. Todd Zeal is also, a, you know, he's, he's a Openly said this will be his last year. He wants to end up in New York. Father now of four and father of a child with juvenile diabetes, and that is a, a an incredible, incredibly taxing uh, situation for both the that we got away from the youngster. Nice save by Cody McKay. But what a what a challenge that is for both the youngster and the parent. Juvenile diabetes. And a crane pool is heavily involved with the Diabetes Foundation. And he said they're making giant strides. Yep. John, getting that under control. John Ratzenberger, who we all remember as Cliff from Cheers, is uh, one of the national spokespersons for that fundraising foundation. Something Todd Zeal very, very involved with as Cameron runs on the 3 2 pitch. Zeal walks. Well, lo and behold, things get set up for Roger Sedania. Chance to be a hero. Well, Roger, for a multitude of reasons, needs a base hit. Sedano last year, 241 right handed batter, 274 left handed. <laughs> Bouncing ball to shortstop. So, Mets had three hits and a walk in the inning, but unable to cash in. So, we'll go to the seventh. And Florida, this four run first inning, still standing up for the Mets. Here the Mets got four in the first. They've not scored since. Cardinals have put three up. And Grant Roberts in his third inning of work faces Taguchi. Taguchi is uh, now on the final year. He got a three-year contract. 
to come over from Japan and has only had 69 major league at bats the first two years because he just hasn't been able to hit. Played for the Oryx Blue Wave for his entire Japanese career. That the, which team did Valentine just go back over to manage? That's a good question. No one Matsui had his press yeah. conference in New York when the Mets signed him. He mentioned a player named Hara, who was his idol growing up. If you can believe it, I did a game in Japan in the 80s that Hara played third base. He was a young player. He was one of the few players in Japan they felt at that time could come over and have a chance of someday playing in the big leagues. Mm -hmm. But that was Matsui's idol. He played for the Tokyo Giants. Okay. It's the Chiba Lade Marines. That's the team that Valentine okay. just went to manage. I always thought the best name over there, I'd love to play for the Nippon Ham Fighters. <laughs> I'm a ham fighter. <laughs> I think that's a great name. I have no idea what its significance is, but it sounds great. Taguchi, a fly ball to Sedeno makes the catch. So one down here in the home or the Cardinal half of the seventh. Well, tomorrow at noon right here on MSG, the latest Mets spring training report. And Franny will be along with an all-new edition. He's going to work hard Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday to have an all-new one for you Thursday at 6 right here on MSG Network. That's how I keep up with my Mets all winter long. Hot stove report. California watching your hot stove reports. The players are uh, very cooperative. During the offseason. Mm -hmm. Put channel on. My wife hears your voice and says, Oh, you're getting ready for baseball, huh? <laughs> A lot of scouts in attendance today. Mentioned Roger Sedano in the lineup. So you wonder if scouts are here to watch Roger play. Quinn dribbles one in the game to catch is Justin Huber. He makes the play. Ah, oh, that's not. That's Mike Jacobs. Sorry, Mike Jacobs in there as the catcher. Funny, Mike Piazza is out of the game, getting his work in. Got himself a base hit. He's been swinging a hot bat down here. He's nice and relaxed. You get a young catcher in there. I can remember like it was yesterday that nervous system activated. There are some of the okay, scouts here. If you can play this game, they will find you. Mm -hmm. Somewhere they will find you. And if you can't play the game, they also note that. Yes, they do. Cody McKay, the batter. Cody McKay is the son of Dave McKay, the uh, longtime coach for, for Tony La Russa. Dave McKay was a big league infielder himself. Dave McKay, who's coaching first base here today, was really the guy way back when that was on kind of the leading edge of getting big time weight lifting into the baseball clubhouses. And he was the guy that sort of Jose Canseco embraced and then Mark McGuire the following year. And then they wanted to take it to a new level. Huh? Yeah, that's, that's certainly been discussed, but Dave McKay was a big league infielder. You know, his son Cody has got a chance. Uh, Tony LaRusso was saying today this kid is impressed because the Cardinals have a need for a, a utility guy. As and McKay walks. Eli Marrero. There's Dave. Daddy's going to see his son now when he comes to first. How about that for a thrill, huh? Mm -hmm. Of course, Tony LaRusso has probably known that young man since he was very yep. young. Yep. Cardinals traded J.D. Drew and Eli Marrero to Atlanta during the offseason. So John Mabry, who's on deck, is a candidate. Cody McKay at first candidates for that utility role that Tony LaRusso uses so well. A guy that can play six, seven different positions. Tony's got a doghouse because JD Drew seemed to be in it a lot. Of course, he's got a lot of dog houses out yeah. in California. He's a huge dog lover. As an animal shelter yeah. opened up over the winter, the Animal Rescue Foundation. 
Well, Jason Phillips just hit a three run homer in Fort Lauderdale, so the Mets extended the lead. That, that half of the Mets squad. And Witt out to center field. That is Essex Sneed who's taken over there, and he makes the catch. So Brad Roberts hasn't been smooth, but it has been effective. Three innings giving up just a run. Frank Brazell will lead off for the Mets in the bottom of the seventh. This is the, uh, what, the tenth day, eleventh day of spring baseball. Now games in Florida. The Mets still have three weeks of games to play. There's a lot of games. They will be ready. All major league players will be ready. And the proverbial bell sounds. You know, that's why I, th I think there is less concern over the players we mentioned earlier, the guys that have not yet played or have played sparingly, because there's so many games here. And position players generally don't need the foul pop by Brazil that's caught. Most position players will tell you spring training is way too long. It is. Because, it, especially today, because the players come in such great shape. But you got to get the pitchers in their, their game work. And in many places, spring training has become a money making proposition for teams. Joe McEwing grounded out twice. So here's one of the uh, young faces. Another bright Met pitching prospect, Bob Keppel. He's going to get a chance to work here. <laughs> One after another, we slowly see some of these young arms that may not be Mets until 05, maybe even 06. You never know, but when they'll eventually be ready to get their real chance. But the, but the bright news is that they're, at least they exist. There are yeah. guys in the minor leagues that can throw, guys that other teams want. You talk to Jim Duquette, he talks about getting those hard throwers and stocking the minor leagues with hard throwers, and they will reap the benefits in a couple of years. Scott Kazmir and Matt Peterson, two or more of those names already were reassigned to the minor league complex. Yeah, in fact, Jim Duquette was on with his first televised game and said he's getting, he's putting Kazmir in the minor leagues, getting him away from the manager and the coaches so they don't, they're not tempted to keep him. And then when I talked to Art Howe, Art said, you know what, um, we, we sent them out, but maybe we'll bring them back to pitch a little bit before spring training's over. With a temptation. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet on it. Yeah, Duke wanted him down there. He wanted to get him out of everybody's sight. In fact, Scott Casimir might, and that has yet to be determined, but as McEwing walks, Scott Casimir might start the season pitching right back here in St. Lucie just to keep him out of cold weather. I could understand. Let him go to Binghamton when it gets a little warm. I think more and more, though, you're going to start seeing major league teams bringing up young players and letting them get their feet wet in the major leagues at a young age, more so now than ever before. You look around, you see so many young talent coming up, why waste them in the minor leagues? All right, we're getting down to 92s now. <laughs> that is Corey Ragsdale. Well, he is the pinch runner at first base for McEwing. Prentice Redman, the batter. One of the things that got everybody through last year was, despite the record, was the fact that you saw so many young players come up and achieve firsts, first hits. First wins. Prentice Redmond had a home run last year. 
against the Phillies. And, uh, his veteran Doug Creek in the Cardinal bullpen. But in a year where all was lost in terms of wins and, and losses, that was about the one thing that propels you was to see the smiles on kids' faces who uh, apprentice Redman the 254 AAA last year. So it wasn't like he was a blazing, you know, demanding to be called up prospect because of all the circumstances. He got a chance. He took advantage of it to get a hit, get a couple of hits, get a home run. Prentice is 24 from Alabama. Miles went back just to our right. That almost hit Mike Shannon, I think. Here's Mike Shannon on the left. Wayne Hagen on the right, the Cardinals radio team. Mike, is it, can you tell how engrossed he is by this? <laughs> Look at him. He's gripped. He said, this is a spring training game. <laughs> There's another guy, Mike Shannon. He talked about a lifelong Cardinal. Oh, yes. Player and broadcaster. Had a kidney removed and it you know, hurt his career, and he went in the broadcast booth and was a partner to the great Jack Buck for many years. Gets the corner. Redmond is out on strikes. So two down here in the Mets seventh and Jose Reyes. The old bat, but Tony La Russa is coming out. And I guess uh, Narvison has reached whatever pitch count he was held to and going to make a mid-inning pitching change. Tony La Russa probably has pulled more pitchers out of games than any manager in the history of the game. Maybe Sparky Anderson could challenge him. Captain Hook. If he manages long enough, Felipe Alou, he the other one. Yes. Felipe does that a lot. So Doug Creek comes in to take over. We'll take a pause here in the bottom of the seventh with the Mets up one. Side, the backfields. Mets with a brand new rehab center. And more sophisticated equipment. <laughs> this is unbelievable. This is an unbelievable setup down here. As Doug Creek takes over on the mound for the Cardinals. And uh, Creek is a story that I'm shaking my head at here because I'm reading his bio. Creek has bounced around. He was with uh, Tampa Bay for a few years, Toronto last year. But what, shake, what I shake my head about is Doug Creek had Tommy John surgery June 3rd, according to his biography, June 3rd of last year, he had Tommy John surgery. Now, it's remarkable that he's pitching in games already. Yeah. Scott Strickland of the Mets had Tommy John surgery June 17th, just two weeks after Doug Creek. And Strickland is uh, only throwing at you know, 75 to 80 miles an hour right now. He's on t on course in his rehab. So this is a st if this is true, <laughs> this is an astounding comeback by Doug Creek. Creek is throwing hard. I mean, if his, if he really had Tommy John surgery to be pitching in a game in a big league game in nine months, which is what we're talking about, that's amazing. I, I've not heard of that before. Speaking of Tommy Judge, you know he's the fifth winning his left-hander in the history of the game. Mm -hmm. Tommy Judge had a terrific career, despite the surgery, and he's not a doctor. Ragsdale runs and Reyes fouls it back. All right, Franny here, take everybody through this. Look at this, and well, look at the facilities, the the exercise facilities. Then you have a you're going to see a treadmill underwater. Just unbelievable setup here in Port St. Lucie. So if you ever get a chance, go over to the complex, tradition field, Bill Webb going down in the water. 
Bill Webb wishes he had that build. What do you think, Ted? <laughs> Put it on his shot, boy Reyes. Good swing there, but lines one right to Wit. Bill Webb's happy. There's three outs. <laughs> So the eighth inning here at Port St. Lucie Mets up by one and Grant Roberts is trying to come out and pitch a fourth inning after Steve Traxel worked for John Mabry is the batter. And we're joined by. Returning Met Todd Zeal How's it feel to have that orange and blue on again Todd uh, feels very good. I'm not used to the orange jersey but uh, <laughs> you know orange and blue it is. Hey Todd. Um, even though you feel or the Mets feel they're going to move you around different positions. You've always been a starting player. You've been a competitive athlete. Is that still inside you that you could play a position every day right now. I think I could. Um, you know I know that that's not the role that I'm in right now but um, I think I could have had that opportunity at a couple of other big league ball teams but I, I, I made the choice um, to come here because you know, I had a great experience with the Mets before, um, and if I wasn't going to play here, the only other choice I had was L.A. because it's close to home. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, this is going to be the last year of my career, and I didn't want to go out and, and sacrifice some things just to get some more at-bats. I wanted to be able to have a chance to win. I love New York, um, and as you guys well know, I had a great experience with this team. Is there any different mindset for you Todd this spring knowing as you said you've made that declaration that this will be your last season. Yeah I'm trying to just um, you know enjoy it a little bit and, ex and really sort of live the experience and not let it pass by because uh, you know it's cliche uh, as anything there is said in the game but um, it goes very quickly you know it's been 16 years uh, at the major league level for me and um, you know it doesn't seem like uh, it's been two so. Um, I'm going to try and enjoy it. I'm going to try and have my family along for the summertime in New York and let them enjoy it. And then, uh, you know, when I walk away, I'll know that I've uh, left it on the field and there's nothing left to give. Todd, it seems like yesterday when Ted Simmons, I believe he was the farm director of the Cardinals, told me that we have a catcher in the minor leagues that's going to be a terrific major league catcher. His name is Todd Zeal. Does it seem like yesterday for you? Yeah, it does. Um, you know, I have uh, some really vivid memories of minor league ball, and when I think back about it, it's been, you know, 18 years uh, since since I signed a contract, and um, you know, it, it's it's hard to put into perspective. I mean, a lot of things have happened in my life. I have a great wife and four great kids, and uh, you know, really established myself uh, in my community. But um, by the same token, it just feels like it's flown by on the field. We've been talking, Todd, about. Pitchers, we're going to, you know, you're seeing Grant Roberts, who's still, we consider him a young guy, uh, one of the bright young arms, Keppel warming up in the bullpen for the Mets. From what you've seen this spring, give the fans at, in New York and the tri state area a view of, from a veteran, what you've seen from these arms this spring. Uh, I've seen three or four um, guys that I think have uh, not just good arms, but have an idea what they're doing on the mound, Keppel being one of them. Um, and uh, there's a couple of other young guys on the horizon. Uh, that are tall and lean and throw hard with a couple of other pitches to go with it and has a great poise in the games that I've seen. So, um, you know, that's what it's all about. I think you've got to be able to find a way to develop talent, especially uh, mound talent, um, to be able to compete, especially in that National League East. Yeah. All right, well, Todd, thanks. It's good seeing you back in a Met uniform today. Always good to be here. Thanks, all guys. Right. Todd okay, Zeal, a major contributor to the Mets this year. And you once again, given that right handed bat coming off the bench in particular. You hear his last answer once again. He mentioned hard throwers. <laughs> still, That's a catcher yeah. for you. <laughs> That's right. So two outs here. Grant Roberts had uh, really that, that his first inning was the one where he seemed to struggle to find a rhythm. And once he got through that into the sixth, things got smoother. And now he's one batter away from finishing up another good four inning stint. Steve Traxel pitched the first four giving up two runs. Could be a major decision on the part of the Mets to give him an opportunity to come back as a starter. Of course you mentioned Yates they, they got a battle going on for that well, fifth role and it, it definitely. Uh, you know the, the fifth starter spot. 
is a domino effect because if Grant Roberts is not the fifth starter, he's likely going to be on the team in yes. the bullpen. So there's some relievers who might get squeezed out if Roberts is in that one. And he gets hard here. I think. Did they? Hold on a second, everybody. Hey, Mets fans, step up to the plate and save up to 40% on Mets game tickets with your MasterCard. On select days throughout the 2004 season, the MasterCard Grand Slam pack offers fans four. That's four discount tickets and Mets money. To purchase your Grand Slam ticket package, show up to Shea. Call 718-507-TIXX or log on to Mets.com and have your MasterCard ready. Once again, that's a Grand Slam ticket pack. Show up at Shea and show up to Shea. Call 718-507-TIXX or log on to Mets.com and have your MasterCard ready. Operators are standing by. So we go to the bottom of the eighth. And uh, Timo Perez will lead off for the Mets. His first at bat today. And he's facing left hander Ray King. Timo yesterday missed the team bus to Lakeland, which is not a way to endear yourself. Had to get there on his own, did get there in play. And here he delivers a base hit. So all sins are forgiven, maybe. <laughs> well, it's nice for Timo to get a hit off a lefty. You know, it's funny, depending on the personality of the player is how the manager will react. When I played for Jack McKeon, we had a number of young players, say about three or four, like uh, UL Washington, Rodney Scott, any guys that went on and played big league baseball, and they missed the bus. McKeon got a big kick out of these guys. I mean, he disciplined them. Made them run extra, but he liked them. Now, if he didn't like them, they'd have been gone in the minor leagues because of it. Foul bunt by Essex Sneed. His first at bat. Well, after four innings on the mound, Grant Roberts <coughs> now joins us. How you feel, Grant? Uh, good. A little, a little tired right now, but uh, <laughs> feel good. How Grant, about Excuse me, Ty. I want to find out about the velocity wheel. How'd you feel? How'd you feel about your velocity today? I mean, I felt strong early, but I was uh, I was a little erratic and was having a hard time getting the ball down. But you know, today was a battle, and I got through it. I was just going to say the first inning you pitched it obviously was. Did, was there something that got you through? Because the last couple of innings were much smoother. I just tried to really bear down on uh, my mechanics and think about what I was doing out there, and just tried to get ahead and keep the ball down. Are you working on new pitches? Uh, not really. Uh, just trying to trying to really get the cutter going, and uh, I've been throwing some curveballs. I, I should be throwing a little more, few more changeups, but uh, overall, uh, four singers and cutters, and so mixing in some curveballs. 69 pitches, 39 strikes. How do you feel about those numbers? Uh, I wish there was a few more strikes in there. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's not too good. But, uh, like I said, it was a battle, and you know, there's days like this, and you got to fight and get through them. Right. We we talked about this, Grant. You must be happy to be given the chance to start again. Yeah, I am. I'm very happy. I'm very excited about the chance. Um, feel like I'm really going after it hard, and I'm working hard. And just being out there is nice. You know, I, I didn't pitch all last year in spring, and had to battle with some injuries. But I, I feel really good, and I feel strong. Mm -hmm. And I'm just happy out there. I'm I'm out there playing. Grant, does it help you relax more knowing that? If you're unsuccessful getting the fifth s spot on the staff, then you will be in the bullpen in the big leagues. Yeah, well, nothing's guaranteed. So, I mean, I, I, I guess I have a little bit of that in my favor, but I still feel like I have to go out and earn a spot if it's uh, starting or in the bullpen. How about the one sleeve look today? We've noticed that. <laughs> Is that new? <laughs> I featured it the last two times out. Okay. Just, uh, just trying to keep the uh, elbow and everything warm, and <laughs> maybe I'll throw another one on there next time for you guys. <laughs> All right. Well, Grant, good job today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Grant Roberts, who pitched four innings, giving up just one run, and uh, another step forward for Grant in his quest to win that fifth job in the Mets rotation. Meanwhile, uh, some of these Met young hitters getting a look at a veteran left-hander and Ray King. Mike Jacobs is a guy that uh, – Met people, Mets organization and staff, they love this kid's swing. He uh, was the organization player of the year last year. His work at 
Binghamton, where he hit 329. 17 homers, 81 batted in. Started, he's a catcher, but he's uh, right now his bat's ahead of the, the glove, so he's starting to move out, maybe work a little bit at first base. Easier to work on the glove than it is the bat. Mm -hmm. Well, the bat will keep you around. Not many gloves keep you yep. in the lineup. You got to have something to go with it. Timo Perez running and Jacobs. And that is safe at second and out at first. So Bo Hart tried to steal that out at second base. Didn't get it, but they still get Jacobs at first. 4 6 3. Whoa, it was hit hard. Took a chance there. But they were still able to get the runner going down to first baseline. Well, you know, Fran, you, you still can do that. You, you, you watch a kid in BP, and I've watched Jacobs a couple of times this week, and the ball does make a little different sound coming off yeah. his bat. I mean, he hits the ball with some pop. You know, you, you, you can see it. When, when the Scots are in the stands, they'll look for the ball coming off the bat. Does it explode off the bat? And if it explodes off the bat, they're happy to see that. They'll, they'll look a lot longer. And a kid that has a live bat. Some of the scouts here in the stands. Radar guns checking out velocity. Now looking at Aaron Baldiris. Third baseman, 20 years old, who spent last year at Capital City and with the Brooklyn Cyclones. And hit. He hit well. He hit 313 at Cap City, 364 in Brooklyn. Venezuelan. Ray King, who's really proving that if you're left handed and your arm works, not much else matters. <laughs> Ray uh, is obviously enjoying himself in the offseason. <laughs> But you know what? This guy, I mean, he's got a durable left-hand arm. He's 80 games a year. And uh, the Cardinal, I mean, this was a big acquisition. He came from Atlanta in the J.D. Drew trade. Cardinals got, in that trade, they got three pitchers. Jason Marquis, the Staten Island product, who uh, Tony La Russa says has been throwing very well. This young, uh, this guy, Ray King, and then a young pitcher, Adam Wainwright, who's only 22, was considered the number one pitching prospect in the Braves organization. Valderis flies out to right field where it's caught by Colin Porter, and that puts an end to the inning. So the Mets go down and will try to hold on to this one run lead in the ninth. Second straight game here in Port St. Lucie where the Mets scored in the first inning and not again. You got a night uh, not able because of defensive mistakes to finish it in the ninth. Now they give the ball to one of their bright young prospects, Bob Keppel, who's 21 years old from St. Louis. And the first batter, Emil Brown, hits one in the hole. And Ramsdale wow. can't make the play. Brown gets down that line too well and beats it out. How about that? This is just a routine ground ball. And he beats the throw to first base. This kid can fly. Well, he's, again, he's a guy, Emil Brown, has been around a long time trying to impress a new manager. And he beats that ball out to shortstop. Marlon Anderson, former Phillies second baseman, now pinch hits. Saw Bob Keppel's number spending most of last year at Binghamton. Keppel was a Sandwich pick first between the first and second rounds of the 2000 draft out of high school where he was an outstanding point guard Had a chance to play basketball at Notre Dame decided to sign in baseball Move the tying run to second base Craig Brazell picks the ground ball up tags out Anderson So Cardinals have the tying run at second now with one out Colin Porter will be the batter. Keppel has a good build for a pitcher. As you mentioned, also a basketball player. Very aggressive coming off that rubber. And he's a 
Fastball and a very good changeup. Third pitch slider. Missing for a ball to Porter. If we play on Mike Lincoln getting ready in the Cardinal bullpen. Good movement there, but didn't get the pitch as he tried that back door on the inside corner. One of the real decisions for the Mets organization as spring goes along is to decide where these young pitchers are going to go to start the year. 3 0 now, which levels they'll start them at. And once they leave the Major League camp, they'll go over there behind the left field fence and that's where those decisions will be made by minor league personnel. But major league personnel will have an influence, and I'm sure that Gary LaRock and his guys have a pretty good idea where a lot of these kids will play this year. Right now, they know where they're going. They still have some surprises. Bob Keppel pitched all of 2002 here in St. Lucie, then last year, three starts for the Cyclones. Before going on to Binghamton. There's a strike, so it's three and two. Keppel last year started the year as a 20-year-old in double A. I mean he had a 3.04 ERA. Low walk count, so it was uh, an impressive performance holding his own in a good double A league at a fairly young age. Mm -hmm. Got a pretty good mustard on a low fastball. He missed it right there. This ball seems like it's moving. Yeah. And that's the thing you notice about it. Talked about that bat when the ball jumps off the bat while well, the scouts in the stands are looking for live arms. And as Ted mentioned earlier, the Mets are starting to get an influx, not only in their lower minor leagues, but they're starting to elevate them to the middle and higher minor league teams. So two on now for the Cardinals. One man out. Mark Quinn, the batter, is hitless in four tries today. You know, you put a kid like this in this situation, the ninth inning, a one run lead. And just imagine what his heartbeat's like, the adrenaline. Mm -hmm. Well, this is, he's more excited right now than yeah. the regular season game in the minor leagues. That's what you can see is going on. Unfortunately, he's got all, see, Rick Peterson sees this. He's smart. And this is where you would like to have seen Mike Jacobs get up the catcher and do something. But yeah. he's a young guy, too. There's all the young guys out there. And this kid, Keppel, needs somebody to come out and just calm him down for a moment. But it's fun because you, days like this, particularly a split squad day, a lot of the young guys who know they're not going to be on the big league team this year mill around the dugout because they know they're getting a chance That's today. Right. Bob Keppel was in the dugout before the game, walking around. He's pretty excited. He said, I think I'm going to get the ninth inning today. And the young kid Ragsdale was walking around talking to people. He had an idea he was going to play. With the big, with the big eyes watching. That's right. That That's important. I mean, this is. Mm -hmm. Opportunity right here for all these young kids. Mm -hmm. You know, you have Art Howe and his staff, you have the front office here, you have scouts from other teams here, and this is the major league level. You saw McKay on deck, whose dad is coaching first base for the Cardinals. Ooh, a little jam shot dribbler. Ragsdale will have a play at first base, and he makes it. Nicely done by Corey Ragsdale. That's the second out, but the Cardinals advance the tying and lead runs to scoring position. Ragsdale saying, if I can impress Art Howe and uh, so he doesn't come back before opening day, maybe. <laughs> no, no. You always have to have that, yeah. that little bit of hope. Well, the door got opened up. You even look at this young man, Ragsdale, playing short for the Mets. Uh, Chris Basak, who's been 
in a higher level in the minor leagues had a rough week in the field. And so today he's not out there. Now, he may have made the other trip. I'm not yeah. sure. But this uh, young Ragsdale gets the chance today. Cody McKay is the last hope for the Cardinals here. Well, this big right hand is throwing hard. Getting that pitch. Now again, our angle from center field is not true, so we don't mean to portray it that way, but he's thrown that pitch about three or four times in this inning. He hasn't gotten it called yet. He does have a base open. So he has little room for error. There he did. He got that ball up a little bit. He got that corner one and two. Good location right there. Good ball movement. What you like about Keppel is he's he throws that pitch. I mean, every left-handed batter has been up in this inning. He's been willing to try to backdoor that ball on the inside. Well, you got to like the way he's coming off that yeah. mound. He's got a lot of fun. He's very aggressive with throwing that ball with a lot of confidence. Ooh. Pretty good shot right yeah, there. Was. Look at this pitch. Good fastball. Two and two still go. Location, location, location. You got first base open. Back through the middle, and McKay delivers a hit. One scores. Here comes the second, and it will score. And the Cardinals have the lead. So Cody McKay hammered one up the middle just past the dive of Ragsdale. And the Cardinals get two here with two outs in the ninth. So he gets his yeah. pitch. And you know what? He up. went up and got yep, that sure baby. Did. Just out of the reach. And balls bobble a little bit right there. Allowing the Cardinals to pick up two runs. And Dave McKay has to be very proud of his son. Well, the inning started out with what looked to be a routine ground ball. And Emil Brown beat it out. That started it. The Cardinals ended up with two, and they're still batting. Kevin Witt at the plate. Keppel throwing a curveball. That's the first curveball he's throwing. The well, story today for the Mets, like it was here on game Thursday night. The Mets scored in the first inning, didn't score again, and ended up giving the game up in the ninth inning. We'll have a shot here in the bottom of the ninth facing uh, right hander Mike Lincoln. One of the things to that organizations always do and the fans need to keep in mind that oftentimes when you watch spring training games. They get decided late in the games by minor leaders. Yeah, that's right. And that's been the case the last couple of uh, games here with the Mets. Two runs here for the Cardinals in the ninth, and they take the lead. Now we go to the bottom of the ninth in Port St. Lucie, and the Mets down by a run frustrated <laughs> Bob Keppel, who is, uh, was one out away from getting through it. Now the Mets will have Roger Cedeno to lead off the bottom of the ninth. The one regular who's still out there. Get us some three at bats today. Mike Lincoln, a right hander, takes over as the Cardinal pitcher. Last couple of years in Pittsburgh, five saves last year. 
So it's up to Mike Lincoln to save this game. They'll really pick up a save the game for the Cardinals, and Roger Cedeno will lead it off. So Roger has an opportunity to impress right now. That's all you ask for in spring training, that opportunity, and Roger certainly is getting it right now. Misses, so it is 2 0. Cedeno the other night. Thursday night's game, same situation, let off the ninth and drew a walk. And then was thrown out trying to steal. Craig Grizzell is behind him. Two balls and a strike. Ball up in the gap in left center, but it's slicing towards the left fielder and caught by Emil Brown. So Savino hit that one sharply, but caught for the first out. So Craig Brazell ground out a walk and a pop up today. Might be playable, drifting toward the left field stands, and that's going to tail out of play. Tomorrow, Al Leiter will pitch for the Mets in a game here, and he will be shown in the Tri State area on WB11. Al's throwing the ball very well down here in Florida. He's in great shape again this year after losing about 15 pounds during the course of the season last year. Lost it, kept it off. David Weathers is going to pitch tomorrow. He had a significant weight loss. That ball's pulled to right field for a hit. So Craig Brazell gets a one out hit here in the bottom of the ninth. And again, you talk about ball jumping off your bat. Brazell's bat right here explodes that ball into yeah, right see, field. He, got, he hurt himself. I was wondering because he got the first base not running real well. Clearly tweaked himself at home plate. So Corey Ragsdale, and uh, the numbers you see there are interesting. From one standpoint, and it does highlight a truism in, in baseball, but it's not always fair. Corey Ragsdale has spent three years in the Mets system, and his batting average is 177 now. Most players that would earn them probably an invitation to pursue another line of work. Right. But Corey Ragsdale was a second round draft pick by the Mets. And, and they're still hoping that he'll yeah. live up to the right. potential they saw when they signed him. And, and, and to be fair, he was drafted out of high school, so he's only 21 years old. And the hope is that, yes, there's someday there'll be the development of that. But it is something you hear a lot from kids in the minor leagues. It isn't always fair. You know, the clearly the higher the draft pick, the the greater the chance. You know, Ted, when I signed, I, I went to Dubuque, Iowa, and had a pathetic year. And that winter, they put me on a major league roster. And the kid that played third base for us hit about 280, hit about 15 home runs, and uh, drove in a lot of runs, maybe 80 runs, and they released him. <laughs> Imagine that. They released him. They released him, and they put me in a major league roster. What were they thinking? I thought, you know what? <laughs> I thought may, may, and somebody didn't see the games that year. <laughs> well, you know what they did is that I guess they went on potential like they do today. Right. And you know the the, the scouts, the, these these experts in baseball, they have a pretty good idea. I mean, it's a difficult job to project into the future. The kid that they released might have been a college kid. I was out of high school. Yeah, there's a strike to right field, and that's precisely the point: is that the, the, the projection. For a scout is, is infinitely more difficult with a high school player oh, yeah. than a college player. That yeah. was the whole point of Moneyball. I mean, you just read that book. That's what the point the book makes. Okay, we understand that. Um, but once you get there, once you put the uniform on, 
everybody's supposed to be the same. The key is that because the Mets have invested something in this kid, he's going to get more chances right. than if you were a 20th round pick. That's a fly ball that just blows foul. So Ragsdale got that one up there in the wind. Gave that a little help with distance, but unfortunately it also gave it a help in pushing it foul. You know the ball Ragsdale fielded earlier, you could see he's got some talent defensively. Right here he just misses a home run. Boy, would that have done a world of good for his confidence. Now he hit that ball, it never looked like it would carry that far. The wind is going out in that direction. You know what, when you hit it out, you don't care. You never mm -hmm. think, boy, the wind helped that baby. And Lincoln misses ball four, so. The Mets now have the tying run at second, the lead run at first. And the other half of the Mets squad, Tyler Yates, Dan Wheeler, Ricky Batalico, are all scheduled to pitch down there, and the Mets win 7-1. to one and Jason Phillips for the home run, right. Ricky Batalico's a name, by the way, to keep in mind in the competition for that last spot or two in the Met bullpen. Mm -hmm. Batalico, a uh, former All-Star reliever who's trying to come back from surgery. Prentice Redman has struck out twice. Reyes is on deck. Well, Reyes getting a complete game today. I like it. Play there with Mabry coming in behind Ragsdale. Redmond, 43 stolen bases in Binghamton in 2002, at 24 last year in Norfolk. Mm. Lincoln just missing with that fastball. There he is. This baby could load him up. Jimmy Jernell is the emergency pitcher down there for the Cardinals. Reyes has three hits already today. He's going to get it. In all likelihood, a chance to get another one. Now Redmond hits the 3-1 pitch into shallow right center. And Bo Hart, boy, that was not easy. Bo Hart made the catch for round number two. Well, he played that win like it was no big deal. So let's go back and review what Reyes has done today, and he's done it in a nice fashion. With a base hit in the left field, second time up in the third inning, same type of a hit for Jose Reyes. And he had another one in the fifth inning as he went to the right side of the plate. That's Reyes' afternoon. Three hits. He has a chance for his fourth. If he gets one here, he could tie this ball game up. Well, that first hit was part of a four-run first inning for the Mets. Kaz Matsui doubled. Reyes singled him home, and then Todd Zeal hit a two-out three-run homer. Mets have not scored since. Cardinals took the lead with two here in the top of the ninth, and now Reyes is the last hope for the Mets. And the only out Reyes made, batting right-handed against Ray King in the seventh at a line drive to third base. So Lincoln got some instruction from Dave Duncan on how to pitch to Reyes. And the first one for a strike. Craig Brazell, runner at second, and Corey Ragsdale at first. That's not a bad pitch, 1-1. One, one. Timo Perez is on deck. Hey, 
Oh, oh, Reyes oh. drives this to deep right field, and it is caught oh. by Mark Quinn to save the ball game. Wow. Boy, Reyes. Oh, look at that, baby. He ripped that. Mm. You know, Ted, it's funny. We talk, we talk about the ball jumping off the bat. Well, Reyes last year, you can see, was feeling for the ball. But look at this. 195 pounds now, and he smoked this ball. Oh, that was well played by Quinn. Yeah. Well, that looked like it had a chance to win it for the Mets, and instead the Cardinals survive and win it by a final of five to four. Now Lincoln can smile. His heart was beaten off with fast there about 30 seconds ago. So the final, Cardinals five, Mets four. On behalf of our entire crew, we remind you our next spring training game on Fox Sports. Then it'll be March 24th from Fort St. Lucie. Of course, tomorrow, the Mets here on WB11. For our crew with Mike Santini, Bill Webb, Bob Lawani, I'm Ted Robinson with Fran Healy. Thanks for joining us here in Port St. Lucie. Don't forget tonight, all of the day's recap on MSG Sports Desk at 10. Now the Mets got Matsui and Reyes going at the top of the order today. Todd Zeal had a payoff with a big first inning home run. For the rest of the day, the Met bats fell silent to the Cardinal pitching, and the Cardinals with two in the ninth win it, five to four. Hope you've enjoyed our spring baseball for Port St. Lucie, everybody. Take care. So long.